Recording is on. I leave you to introduce you. Your microphone is off. Oh, hello. Yeah, I'm Greg. So greetings, everybody. Good morning. It's um, Sunday, October 24th, and this is the Eastern Extinction RT meeting, number 81. Almost going to be a, a century. <laughs> um, that'll be two years. It was coming up it's amazing but essentially we started this if you remember from dance macabre when when the lockdown started uh with covid so it means that kind of the pandemic is also about the same age as these <laughs> discussions these could be called the pandemic discussions but uh incredible how time has flown isn't it so anyway does anybody have a pressing topic um, I, I thought we might be doing AI again because, but Ryan isn't here and I thought he was uh, the one that initiated the AI discussion. So I'm not sure everybody wants to talk about AI, but does anybody have some topics? I, I was just interested in your remark that you were thinking uh, and not sleeping. And uh, I'm just a little bit intrigued that you would get caught in a little thought vortex that you wouldn't be able to um, stop that. Um, or, you know, I mean, I can appreciate you might I, have wanted I didn't to. think about stopping because I, I didn't think about stopping. Uh, you know, what I normally do is I can put myself to sleep like that. Um, mm. But I have to remember <laughs> to, to, to do that. I, I was just enjoying thinking about it. And... Um, what I was trying to think is how to communicate to to people, especially on these meetings, it, exactly the point I'm trying to get across about AI. It's difficult to get, but it's really important. Um, the the main uh, the main thing about AI is is it's a vehicle or just this discussion about what is is intelligence and AI. It's a stalking horse for for visualizing the the alien cortex. So it's really all about, you know, AI itself is the brainchild of about 1% of our brain, the alien cortex. Um, and the, the anxiety, I think that like Ryan feels about it and other people is, is come straight from the alien cortex. And, and so it gives you a, a good understanding of what the alien cortex is. It's Alien cortex is Satan. <laughs> it's a principle of the universe. It goes quite deep. Um, but it's inside us. And so it's a malevolent module in our brain. There's a maladaptation. And AI is its brainchild. So why it has anxiety about it is, is it's, uh, it's self-loathing. It's, it's the reason why uh, we have this love-hate relationship with AI is because our our alien cortex is having a love-hate relationship with itself. AI, as it is embodied, is an extension of that part of our brain. And it works like that part of our brain works. It's, it's not functional in the long term. It's actually lethal to, to, to go down that path. And the, the reason is, it's, um, it's the, the difference between order and chaos. So in other words, it's a, as I mentioned with the before is like life is kind of a boundary condition between order and chaos every everything that's going on on this planet if you look at the ecosphere it's a thin thin layer a boundary condition on the surface of the planet 
between you know air and rock, that boundary layer is extraordinarily thin, and it's a transition layer. So like you know, they used to say on the edge of chaos. Then a whole lot of people wrote papers saying that's all bullshit. It's not bullshit. The key to understanding life is that it's a boundary condition right on the edge of chaos. And what AI and the alien cortex and this thinking of trying to get order, safety, control, all of that is too crystalline. It's too ordered. So if you go down that path, you'll turn into a pillar of salt. <laughs> Basically, you become too crystalline. You'll be like Lot's wife, you know. That's the lesson in the, the Old Testament. It's like Lot's wife looked back at uh, Gomorrah when it was destroyed, and she turned into a pillar of salt. Basically, the, the injunction, I think, that Yahweh gave was like, don't look back. Well, you just talked about writing and stuff like that. Is What's wrong with writing is, is looking back. You see, everybody's so obsessed with recording stuff and gaining stuff and building knowledge and all of this kind of ordered productive kind of mindset they're missing the the value of forgetting the problem with writing is now part of intelligence is forgetting <laughs> especially strategic forgetting and so we we are kind of a cancer of accumulation and, and we think we we think we're getting more and more knowledge but we're not we we really creating Borgia's infinite library. So it, it's uh, you have to come at this from many angles <laughs> to get it. But we are sick, sick society. We have this brain disease. And it's called the alien cortex. And the, what a simple uh, the symptoms of it is is uh, you know all the things that I've I mentioned. It's kind of defense strategies. It's. Um, it, basically, inversion, substitution, deflection, um, diversion, ignoring, all of those things are things, tactics of the alien cortex to preserve itself. Because it's its an imposter. It's illegitimate. It is, it is superfluous to nature. And so it has to lie to survive. It's daily, it's lying all the time. Alien cortex is lie, lie, lie. And it, it the way it... Uh, it stays alive is by inverting reality, by, by substituting fake things for real things. And that's what AI is. So Here, AI can I is anti-intelligence. Would you it's, mind if we back just, up? Just one okay. AI, AI is fundamentally anti-intelligence. If you understand the, they think they're making machines intelligent, they're actually making the kind of antimatter of intelligence. So the alien cortex is the epitome of stupid. Right? And now our whole culture is inverted. We look at, you know, we'd say people are smart because they have, you know, IQ tests. Like, look at this people. He's, uh, his IQ is off the charts. He's, he's, he's very intelligent. No, he's fucking stupid. He's an idiot savant. You see, that, that, that's the, the thing that we're not getting. We're making idiot savant kind of machines. And we say, like, but look how fast it can run these numbers. I posted to show you how fucking stupid our culture is. And where we've got to. I posted this thing. Um, it's well worth looking about this um, uh, math, math logger thing. Um, and, and it's astounding. Because I, <clears throat> it gels so well with this thing that uh, happened to me in school that I think I mentioned before about an IQ test. They gave us an IQ test. And, you know, the, all these boys sitting in this big mess hall <laughs> exam room kind of thing. And, you know, they introduce, you know, all the things like, you know, what's the next in the sequence? And then they give you a tractor and a bicycle. And, and, and you know, we're, we were argumentative boys. And so, you know, we'd say that this is bullshit. They, they, they gave the first example and then say that's how this works. And the example is like, you, it's easy to come up with a more intelligent thing than you answer. It's kind of like a tractor, a train, a plane. <laughs> and then they say, well, all of these are, you know, kind of work things, and this one's recreational. So that, that's the odd one out, or, you know, something like that. And it's like, but hang on a minute. All of these things have wheels, except basically the ship. Therefore, it must be the ship. It's like you can make up any fucking story. There's no right answer to that. So, so then, you know, the teacher said, look, say, I said, look, 
how do you know? The brilliant answer would be is say if you get the gematria, add up all the things of car, plane, and stuff like that. Say they're all prime numbers apart from the, the tractor. That would be brilliant. And the, the, the teacher said, Well, no, but obviously that's not what the examiner was looking for. So I said, All we're doing here is trying to see that what's admin people, a person in the school system that came up with this test, we just have to second guess the way they're thinking. And the teacher said, effectively, yes. <laughs> so they're like, what's intelligent about that? If you work in the fucking school admin system, you, the chance of you being intelligent are very low. <laughs> That's why you got the fucking job in the, in the first place. Now, I mean, that was my intuition told me it was IQ test with bullshit squared. Um, uh, but uh, that, that maths log is a stunning proof of it, a mathematical proof of it. Because if you substitute each one of those things, the tractor and things for, say, numbers, then what that video shows, that math log shows, is any sequence is valid. Is any, if, if you take those as number sequences, you can literally put anything in, in there and work backwards to find out what the logical sequence is. Anything that means an IQ test is false, provably mathematically fucking false. And I, I mean, that's just the bits, the, the logic bits. And you look at the lexical bits, all of these things are, are completely invalid. Because if you gave an IQ test to something like a Piraha person or Sarn Bushman or something like that, uh, they would do spectacularly bad. The Piraha have. Only you know one, two, and many. That's as far as they can count. They 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 would come out close to where your dog would come out on an IQ test. But the Puraha are much much smarter than you. If you go into the jungle and basically try and live like a Puraha, you'll see that they're much smarter than you because they're using their whole brain. And as Westerners, we're stuck in about one percent. We our brains have shrunk. Our, our brains have shrunk in the last 20,000 years. So the more domesticated, the more urban you are, the stupider you are. And that, because we're living in the alien cortex's world, in this urban environment, it tells us different. It says, no, you're smart if you alien cortex. And then it makes the world more and more bureaucratic, more and more automated, more and more artificial. And then, you know, it says the test of your, you know, intelligence is how well you can fit in this very, very artificial environment. So it's it's horseshit. It's horseshit. It's good. But anyway, so, yeah, sorry, Gary. I, I just had to get that thought out. But what, what were you going to ask? Yeah, uh, thanks, Hugh. Um, I, I actually wanted, before you got too far away, I wanted to go back to where you said that you were enjoying the process of thinking about what, what how you were going to present the AI discussion. Um, and I'm trying to re to relate this to the alien cortex as well because basically the alien cortex is language. It is thought. It, it is mind, what, what we call mind, and, and the whole language, thought, mind thing is, is, seems to me to be the same cluster. Um, and, uh, you know, when I look at thought, um, and. Uh, notice that I'm thinking and, you know, the general mindfulness thing is that, uh, you know, you don't let yourself get tied up, get seduced by, by your thought, um, just remain a little bit to one side of it, you know, a little bit aware of it. But you become aware that your thought can be very seductive, but you, you really, really do want to think the thought that you're thinking. You don't want to let, let it go. It might be an interesting line of inquiry. Um, so that's the first comment, is the kind of seduction of an interesting thought and how that sits in terms of your critique of the alien cortex. Um, but also the other day, um, I was thinking of a, a term that a, a fellow used, I heard on a, on a YouTube video. Um, he was uh, basically, a, I suppose, an antinatalist and he was talking about people's reproductive incontinence. And I kind of transferred the the word over to the way we think. And think, well, a lot of people are mentally incontinent. They just talk. 
they're like got the monkey mind the whole time, this ceaseless chatter that, that you know, that just won't go away and is absolutely beyond their, their um, it's just all happening. You know, they're just letting it go. Uh, probably not even aware that they're being incontinent, I suppose, like a horse will just go anywhere, you know. Um, um, so there's that second point. Um, and um, all right, look, I'll stop there. Does, does that mean anything to you that fits in with what you've just said? Would, c can you comment there? Yeah. So the, 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 I think the thing that you're getting at is, is the difference between who's the servant and who's the master. So it's a McGill-Christ thing. Is what's happened is our alien cortex has become master. So the, the machine will always require you to serve it. You see, well, this is the inversion that we've got into. We're thinking in terms of these machines as they will serve us. They will never serve us. We will always service the machine. That's how it's been right since the Yantra 10,000 years ago. That's what all the sages warned about. The gizmo, the gadget, is that you, you will have to serve it. Why? Because it is, it is, uh, it is a, an approximation. It's a simplification. And you, as the more intelligent, you have to mother it. So it's kind of like a baby, and it will always be a baby because of the way it's structured. It's got to do with the length scales it's actually designed and built in. So in other words, you know, basically, intelligence goes all the way down to the plank length. These machines stop at like the micro level, if, you know, maybe nano. But like, if, if anybody puts nano in front of what they do, they're evil. <laughs> there's, there's no good thing called nano. Right, that humans are uh, endeavor. Humans working at the nanoscale are are demonic. So, the so here yeah, this is so the the thing is is when I'm thinking when like at night the the alien cortex is is acting as an interpreter. It's a mirror. So the alien cortex is is an enlightenment module that we have. See, it's it's being abused to use it as this thing that will you know serve um, you know service us. So the the idea that it's it, if you make a god out of the servant, right? Which is what what we're doing. It, we did it all the way back to the Bible. The Bible, Yahweh is our alien cortex. It's just you know they it says in the Bible that you know God made man in His own image. Horseshit. It's Man made God in his own image. Our alien cortex made Yahweh and Satan and everything in their own image. It's it's this inversion again. And so it's saying, like, what so so we you can never serve God, right? You you I mean, if you make a god out of this thing, you always have to serve it. You will always have to serve Yahweh. It's like Yahweh's place is to serve us. The point of God is to serve humanity, not the there's no logical universe where you know Adam and Eve serve God. It just doesn't make any sense. So it's you know the the creator will always have to service the creation. The creation can never service the creator. So we're creating these machines and we want them to be these universal services. I mean, look look at what these engineers are doing. If if you female you're trying to make what they're really trying to do with AI. The, the female engineers, they really want to make a domesticated robot. They want, they want a, a robot that will clean windows, do the dishes, you know, do the housework, and change the diapers on the baby. That's, that's what the, the women want. What the men want is they want a sex bot, and they want basically a war machine. But either way, it's like that's what... <laughs> That's what these guys are out to do, although they don't write it in the summary on their papers. Underneath it all, between the lines, that's what they do. So, the, so you've got to have a look and say, okay, that's the promise that we have, like Rosie the robot that's going to do all the fucking housework. And it's like, what has AI actually delivered? The fucking Roomba. So that's all. <laughs> we, how, much, how far away? is the Roomba from a general purpose domestic robot. I'll tell you how far it is, infinite. You will never get from a Roomba to the Rosie, the 
the, the robot. Because the, you see, it, the more you work in AI, AI enthusiasts don't understand AI. The more, there's a kind of an inverse correlation. The more enthusiastic you are about it, so say so like, you know, Ray, what's the guy's name? Ray Gerstner? No, no, Ray. Uh, whatever the, the Google engineer guy who said that we'll reach the technological singularity by 20, 2050, I think. And it, that, that, that um, Ray Kurzweil, that's what his name is. And it's, it's like, you know, that, that's, um, uh, you know, that's completely uh, ignorant. You know, a guy who makes that statement is completely ignorant about AI and engineering and software. And you say, but how can you say that? He's the head of Google's engineering department. And I say, that's almost proof that executives don't understand engineering. That's why they become executives. It's like Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs didn't understand a computer. I don't think he understood how a fucking transistor worked. He, I don't think Steve Jobs could write a line of code. You know what Steve Jobs' talent was? Is to say to engineers, I want this and this, and I want it by in six months' time. Otherwise, you lose your job. That's his talent. That's all his talent was. And so basically, people gravitate to, to executive positions and billionaire positions because they're crap engineers. If you're a good engineer, they don't allow you to advance because they need you doing your, your magic. They keep you as a troll under lock and key so that you do your little Neanderthal bit to keep the fucking products flowing. They only let you become an executive because you're too useless to do engineering. So don't be surprised that these guys, the evangelists of all this technology, have big executive and CEO titles. It's because they don't understand what they're working with. If you understand it and you work with AI, then you can clearly see the more you work with it, the more you see that it's a, it's a blind alley. It's fundamentally working on a false premise. So the, they, the way to describe it is it's a false minima. So it's a premature optimization. It's, it's like they may, they're apparently making great advances in AI up a blind alley. You will hit a blind alley up. Is not doing, is not, it's apparently advancing towards the domestic robot, general purpose domestic robot, but it's not. It's, it's basically, it's, it's, you can see it's trapped in a local minima. Already you see, you see you, in the press, you see all the stuff about AI and about all its wonderful successes. And then like, the, you know, that it does AlphaGo beats, you know, this and DeepMind beats Kasparov for chess and very narrow little things. And like after that win of um, Deep Blue um, of Kasparov, then IBM said, well, you know, uh, you might as well not train any more radiologists because these machines are better at looking at x-rays than a doctor. Um, you know, uh, you know, AI is going to be much better. We can just send all the doctors home. They, they can read up on all the literature. And then you, all those headlines were everywhere. Now, like four years later, nothing. There's a little sign. You know what happened? There's nobody today using AI uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, there is no one, no organization on this planet is using AI or uh, neural nets to analyze x-rays independently of a doctor. So it's, it's, it's like, so what the fuck happened? It's all false promise. It's all, they all backed away from it. They all found that it was dangerous. It made wrong inferences. It, in many cases, it couldn't even do what a first-year med student could do. May, may I ask a An question? An amateur can do that. May I ask a question relating to what you're saying, Hugh? Because um, at, before the meeting started, we, we were talking about the surveillance uh, that's coming with the, the new uh, measures against the pandemic. But how do you see that with the, how do you relate what you're saying to the, the mass surveillance that's coming with, uh, with uh, mandates and passes and all these things? How do you, I don't want to use certain keywords, because I'd like the video to stay online, but uh, you know, I, <laughs> I know I'm just talking about this surveillance there. <laughs> so, so what you see, engineers are thinking very narrowly inside inside the box, right? And an intelligence you can take as a as a kind of a watchword is that 
intelligence doesn't exist inside a box. It, in, it exists in a much broader area. So in other words, the environment is the brain. Our, 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 what we, we think of our brain as being intelligent and the environment being dumb. No, if, if the environment is the brain, this is kind of, our head is just like one neuron in it, is the way to think. It's, again, it's inverted. So if you think of like surveillance and what they're trying to do, they're trying to do order. They're trying to do order, predictability, and control of the population. Now, the only reason you do this is because you're a rich billionaire, you're a conservative, and you don't want unrest and, and social change. So in other words, you, you're looking for status. You want a crystalline, predictable, regular world. Why? Because your life is fucking wonderful. You're, you're the fucking queen of England. You don't want anything to change. So they, uh, so, but look what happens when they do that. The, everybody's getting into AI now. There's a gold rush into AI. It's a complete waste of time. So look what, so, so why like China is a liberal, oh, China's in the forefront. Well, China's in the forefront of a race to nowhere. Because like, if you look at like Xi, why is China doing this? Because of Xi, he's a psychopath. Basically, China is all about stability, regularity. It's basically, they are trying to learn harmony that that the pursuit of that com com confucian harmony is its an anti anti andromeda no say that word again um uh yeah anti andromeda is that right yeah anyway it's it's jungian anti andromeda if you pursue that harmony and that, and and order and stuff you will create chaos that's what happened with confucius confucius had all these you know he thought that you can have this wonderful utopia if everything is harmonious, everybody follows these rules and the, reg and the bureaucracy and they have, all, you know, it's this kind of Lee thing. They will follow process. And then the China fell apart under that. It became chaotic. And what there were two schools of thought. I can't remember what the opposing, the guy opposing Confucius was, but Confucius always said, no, we must double down. We must double down. We must, the guys must learn the, 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 the regulations more by rote. They must do more of the ceremonies. They must, you know, they must carry on these rituals. They must learn them harder. We must enforce them. And the more they did that, the more chaos it caused. The more it caused famine and unrest and stuff like that. You see, it's, it's the same as, a, as the agricultural mindset. Is, is you say, like, I don't like the fact that what the forest gives is hit and miss. And so you say, well, I'm going to get control. I'm going to carve out, you know, already you know you're in trouble because you carve out a little rectangle. The minute it's geometric, you know it's coming from an alien cortex and you're in bad shit already. But anyway, the agriculture mindset says, I'm going to carve out a little piece of jungle, wipe it clean with fire, and then in the corpse of the jungle, I'm going to grow predictably. And like the farmers have always been, you know, subject to risk and um, and uh, to uncertainty. They live a very precarious life because that they ne farming never ever paid for itself. It's always had to expand and and conquer more territory to try and do this fool's errand of trying to get predictability out of the forest. The forest. The forest survives on on things like feedback loops and uh, fractal and so all these kind of, you know, it's basically a chaotic system that is really a, has a, a central attractor. So it has equilibrium around an attractor. And so it is semi-stable. But a farming is not. Farming is trying to put a universe in a square box, <laughs> and it cannot be done. If, if Whenever you see it, if you look at Biosphere 2, where they tried to make a second Earth under glass in a greenhouse, and this is why you'll never be going to other planets, because you cannot get the, anything less than the Earth system to have things that have evolved in it. Life exists on this planet. It's very much to do with the surface area and how big it is of, of this planet. So sure, you can go to other planets and have this little, you know, kind of space uh, space colony. How big will it be? Exactly the size of Earth. 
Now, why the fuck would you want to put rockets on Earth to head out to Alpha Centauri 97 <laughs> light years away? It's retarded. So, so the the so uh, you know that that idea of then trying to get regularity becomes its opposite, the anti of it. So, so what they're doing with with surveillance and all of this kind of control is the the way to see this pandemic is its entropy. You know, I mean, literally, what the virus is living entropy, right? And it's getting into um, cells, into the mitochondria, and causing havoc because it's telling the mitochondria, it's giving it false messages. Now, what they're doing now is uh, the the messenger RNA versions of the remedy are uh, they they are exactly that they they counter information they kind of like the anti-information for that it's saying like you know these mitochondria must it's giving them false messages uh, pretending that they came from the nucleus of the of the cell and it's saying here manufacturing these ace2 proteins right ace2 receptor proteins so that then you, your your T cells recognize it go into overload and they have then have memory of that ACE2 receptor. So they're doing exactly the same thing. They put in, they got a bit of entropy. It's playing havoc, which is the original virus. They're doing more. It's kind of like propaganda. It's like um, it's you know, kind of like the. It, it's almost a parallel of what they're doing in the news, where they're giving disinformation about the disease and uh, trying to control it by saying, "No, we need a tsar." Of the of information, the tsar of truth is what Biden said, because you need absolute control, and then and the same things happening. The more absolute control, the more trickles through their fingers. The more resistance you get to it, the more entropy it creates. The more that the very things that you said were wrong turn out to be right. It all turns to shit on you. It's this anti Midas touch, and so the more they try, it's 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 the story of Midas. It's been told over and over and over to again to us, and we just can't fucking hear. I mean, how old does the civilization have to get before you go back and understand what Midas was about? This is the Epic of Gilgamesh. It's the very first piece of literature. So the very first piece of literature might as well have been the last. We, we, why are we writing more books when we haven't understood the Epic of Gilgamesh yet? We are now 10,000 years into this Epic of Gilgamesh. It's like, look, stop writing shit. Stop writing articles in The Guardian. Go back and understand the epic of Gilgamesh. Um, put down your pens. Stop writing. Stop tapping on the keyboards. This is horseshit. We, we, we haven't even understood the epic of Gilgamesh. So why write anymore? If you don't understand you know, the story of Midas, all these cautionary tales, they're all in there. The ancient Greeks told us. Heraclitus told us. He said that, that everything becomes its opposite in the end. Why can't we fucking learn? No, we go on. We're going on to the stars because because Ray Kurzweil says, you know, the Messiah is coming. Moloch, the Messiah, the machine Messiah is going to save us. What he literally said was, soon we will have everything under control. AI will solve wars. It will solve want, plenty, economics, climate change. And say, like, nobody ever questioned the fact that these are problems to solve. Climate change is not a mathematical problem, right? It's not something that has a solution. Oh, I've got it. I got it. X equals 42. See, Douglas Adams fucking, you know, <laughs> got there before you. He said, yeah, but is it a logical? If you ask deep four, it's going to tell you 42. It's going to say, what's the answer to climate change? 42. Now what are you going to do, Ray Kurzweil, you stupid fuck? I mean, you need to be shot, man. It, this is, stuff is so dangerous. I just can't express it. Here is, is it an extension of a, uh, a, a kind of a trap of logic that, that we can solve small problems and apparently do those successfully? And we, we extrapolate that. We therefore assume that because I can solve, uh, you know, uh, uh, the car's got a flat tyre, uh, this is a problem that we can we can deal with, you know. But you, you sort of move up this rather increasingly unstable and, and rotting ladder, um, thinking that the next more complex thing and the next more complex thing can be solved. Uh, 
you know, on the basis of the same logic that a, 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 a simple problem can be solved. So there's a kind of a, a progression of logic trap uh, there, you know, I guess is, is uh, seduced us away from the lessons of Midas and Heraclitus and all the rest of it. I think it's not just a question yeah, of... Yeah, that's the big danger I, I of these things. Just, just, just a moment, Sophie. Yeah? Just, just a moment. Yeah, so no. the, 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 this, is, this is the danger of these things, is that uh, they offer big returns in the short term. So, so they are exactly traps. They are exactly like in Macbeth. It says they, they win us with honest trifles to betray us in deepest consequence. And that, that's, that's what... They oracle machines that way. So what they they apparently give big payoffs. So in other words, it's like a German forest that we were talking about. If you do for, forest management, it'll sucker you in because at first you apparently get big gains. As you go on, they diminish, and then you get uh, less and less diminishing returns. In pursuing the diminished returns, you will destroy the whole forest. So, so you have to be super smart not to be taken in by the early successes, and so that's what we've done with machines. You can you can already see this, the the success of AI tailing off, just as the time that everybody's got a gold rush in it. But oh, sorry, Sophie, go ahead. No, I was just thinking about what Gary was saying when he was saying that we are seduced into this kind of extrapolating our, our little our little solutions to bigger solutions and. I was thinking about what you said earlier about the master and the servant, uh, because from my little experience as a gardener for 30 years now, I, I've moved from organic and, you know, growing things that are more and more using, um, not using, but letting things happen and, uh, you know, enabling perennials to, to grow and and having planted trees and looking at just things that I've sometimes scattered uh, and see how they develop and, and planting a few things that root, uprooting a few things that I like, like herbs and strawberries and stuff in the middle of the wilderness in the, under the trees. And, and I've realized over the years, because I've done that gradually, that suddenly I am led by something, you know, I'm not, I'm not controlling my garden. I'm not making straight lines and I'm, I'm allowing for failure, and I'm looking at at the tracks of the badgers in the middle of the of the patch of trees and stuff. And I, I I don't mind if they're going to eat some of my stuff, and it's not my stuff. And I don't know. And I've noticed the taste of of the perennials. I've tasted some the other day. Some things I ancient things I planted, and it's absolutely delicious. But it's it's tiny. You know, it's not. You're not going to get market size food. But you, and I think that that's that's like you still use your alien cortex in a certain way, but you have it on the, in that example, and only in that example, you have it on the straight, strict control. You, you kind of back to the, the master and it's, and it's a misery of, of Ian McGill Christ that I was trying to, to picture when I was, when I was letting myself be led, but at the same time, um, just using a few tools now and again, you know, getting a little bit of things out of the way, but not, but letting myself be led by what I don't know. But the more you sp time you spend gardening, you might use you, you realize that the, there is this kind of super intelligence in in the garden, right? So you get so that's where the intelligent li lies. So. Well, basically, as a gardener, you're interfering with that intelligence. You're interfering with the, the normal process of it. So you say, well, is there any place for gardening? I say, not really. This, the, the natural world doesn't need gardeners, right? So, it's, so you say, well, what is our place in, you know, as, as, a, as a chimp and stuff? And say, well, according to nature, our place is really we're kind of omnivorous and our... We, we're just supposed to dig holes in the ground and stuff for other animals. And uh, we're supposed to like hunt the, the herds and keep them moving because we're kind of predators. And we eat a bit of fruit and make sure that we, you know, walk a, a good trek and then shit the berries out somewhere. But apart from that, we don't really have a lot of place. 
the minute you get a tool in your hand and you start digging shit up, you, you're interfering. So the, you know, it's it's kind of sad for gardeners, but we we yeah, but not we, really because we there don't are some have tools. any use to make that. It's not really because if you look at animals on the land and how they plow the the ruminants, for example, even in the wild, I'm not talking just about the cows. They every step that they make in the wet in the wet soil, every disturbance they create enables life to come back and they shed somewhere. They have carried seeds from another place. But even you, now that our land has become so, well, not where I live because it's still wide, but most of it has become so sterile and, and overused. But in a, in a wide patch, there is no wild animals who walk, who disturb the thing. And when you make a, 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 a little hole or a little disturbance with your boots or you, you notice that something happens there. So I think you can, you can, I mean, you, you can use your whatever knowledge of, of this animal uh, thing with that, because they're not there anymore. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. There are some tools, for example, like, I know what you're going to say, alien cortex, ta-da, technique, all that. But at the stage, at the stage where we are now, and if we don't reintroduce um, big ruminants on on wide land and wolves to to create the predators balance, so that there's not too many ruminants, you can try to 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 air the soil by by using implements that you make yourself, whether it's sticks or or old pieces of of broken pickaxes, but. I noticed that that is great at airing the soil and even for places that I'm not cultivating. What was the name of that lady who that, that was talking about reclaiming the, the grasslands? You know, that you were talking about quite a few months ago? Yeah, yeah. In Patagonia? Oh, yeah, I don't in, know. In Patagonia? Yeah. Oh, Christina. Yeah. Yeah, in Patagonia. Well, she, she was married to, she's the widow to the Patagonia guy. The company. Right, Patagonia. yeah, I could, couldn't remember but, it. Yeah. So, so here's, the, here's the problem, so, Sophie. Is the delusion that you're being a benefit. So, in other words, you, again, this is the problem of the, the doctors of Auschwitz. So, you, you, you see, what... What should be happening is for the environment to be healthy, the ruminants should come back. The mere fact that the, you, you're having to do this job, the more you do it, the probably the less chance the ruminants will come back. So in other words, you, you giving a short-term palliative that, that is probably costing the environment in the long term. Here, can I Does that make any sense? It's 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 the it's difficult. That no, problem with the Auschwitz doctors is difficult, but in, in trying it. to do good, you're probably doing harm. Yeah. I understand what you're saying completely. I know it when I I can feel it. I know it. I know it exactly. But it's just it's just to say, I would like to go back to the master, and it's a mystery. I think your position, I mean, and your explanations on the alien cortex are extremely clear, and I really like it, and it makes a lot of sense for a lot of things. And I, but there is. In the mastery of and, and the knowledge that we have, this part of the brain that you described very well, um, there is a, um, it has appeared, it has appeared at some stage uh, in our evolution. It has brought us to where we are. We can see it, we talk about it, but we are not, um, uh, is, our, is our task, if I may say, to, to destroy it totally or to tame it? Um, you see, and I, I, I'm, I'm a bit puzzled there. I'm, I'm looking at it. Oh, from okay. A different so this is a very good, yeah. Th this is a very, very good question. So the, so, tame it or control it, is coming from, let's call it the unripe alien cortex. The idea to tame and control and gather and uh, accumulate and learn and, you know, write things down and acquire and stuff. That's in, in terms of, say, psychological development, that would be before the third octave, so in other words, do, re, mi. It's very, that me is, is kind of poetic in the fact that it's egocentrical, it's me, it's dominant, it's controlling and stuff. So the aim of the alien cortex is to get us over that me, uh, do, re, mi, far boundary. So that me, far boundary 
is a transition point, and that's what the alien cortex is for. It is a module used correctly. It's not to control. We don't. We should not say, you know, is it there for uh, what's the correct use of the alien cortex? Should we dominate it, control it, restrict it, restrain it, and say, no, that's your alien cortex talking. So the alien cortex is uh, it, its use is in reflection. So I believe that that this is where AI will take us. So the the alien cortex applied is dangerous. The correct application of the alien cortex is for deeper insight. So the, if you take something like AI, I believe that AI has a great service to offer us. Now, the way people think, the way a, alien cortex 1.0, green alien cortex or unenlightened alien cortex is, is uh, it says, no, you know, like Ray Kurzweil classic is like, it's going to solve all our problems. It's going to fix the world. Well, the world is not broken. <laughs> okay, but anyway, it's it's got it's going to take us to the stars. It's going to do all of the stuff. It's going to make us immortal. In other words, it's a messiah. And so it's a say so that that's the wrong view of AI. The correct view of AI, and I think where where the genesis of AI is, AI will create consciousness. Not in the machine, but in us. By the failure of AI, tell us more about ourselves than than AI will do any, anything for us. So, in other words, it's like the Apollo Eleven mission or something like that. So, the Apollo mission in general was a complete failure. Going to the moon was a dead end. It was a complete waste of time, except for one thing. Everybody looks, because they're linear thinking and they have this progressive mindset, they look at Apollo 11. Apollo 11 was a step too far. The Apollo program reached its, its apiothesis, it's basically its zenith, was in Apollo 8. We didn't realize it, but the whole point of the Apollo mission was to get that Earthrise picture. So the point of going to the moon was to discover Earth. We thought we were going to the moon, but what we really got out of it was Apollo 8. We discovered that blue dot. So the blue dot was the real value. Out. We didn't know that's what we were doing, but something in us knew. And then that's the, the, the meta intelligence is telling us it's basically it's always leading back to the self. It's always leading back to the blue dot, to us. And so, so AI is doing the same thing. AI is our new Apollo program. And it's saying, we're going to go to the stars with this thing. No. The failure, that's Apollo 11. The failure of AI is going to point back to us, and we're going to see what intelligence really is. I mean, I can give you a shortcut right now, but no one can hear. You see, you can even hear in like what Ryan's saying. It's like, he can't see the alien cortex. The alien cortex from ancient times was always done as the bull. Right? So the machine, the bull, is all the same thing as Moloch. Moloch has horns. Moloch is a bull. Moloch is Baal. Right? They're, what they're playing to in the ancient Old Testament is artificial intelligence. That golden calf is, is artificial intelligence. It was, it's Taurus in the night sky. They, they, we've dumbed down so incredibly in the last 10,000 years. They, hunter-gatherers, shamans, and stuff had no fucking problem understanding this. Why do we have such a problem now? It's very, so this bull, right? is like the 10 bull sequences. So if you look in Zen, just Zen stuff is like a thousand years ago. No, not even. And and then they understood it well. It's like, it's all about seeing the bull. It's, it's panel four in the 10 bull sequence. It's seeing the bull. <laughs> AI just... will let us see the bull, right? So, but we can't see it. It's our alien cortex needs to see itself. And so it's it's by AI itself is a kind of cargo culting. It's a mimicking of the AI, but in it, it's like the theater. It's kind of like a comedian talking about us. And so it's in the AI that we will start to see what the genuine intelligence is. And what the genuine intelligence is, sorry if I'm spoiler alert here, but the genuine intelligence is is in the universe. The, the, the intelligence goes down to the plank length. You cannot get intelligence at the micro scale and up. It's, it, that's an approximation. It's a false view of intelligence. So it's, intelligence has infinite scale. And 
And uh, this kind of artificial intelligence, it starts at about the micro level. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, so, yeah, so where, where was it with that? Um, yeah, so the, the universe is intelligence. The, the thing in the box is not. Hugh, um, in terms of losing the wisdom of ancient times, which was, you know, as you've just said, was abundantly clear to those people, uh, just to go back to... to earlier where we mentioned writing a little bit. Um, would you put that as a, as a kind of critical departure point uh, where, where uh, writing uh, led us on a, on, a, on a different, was leading us away from that pathway, leading us more towards the fossilised information and, and this idea of, of human agency as control? Uh, do, you, do you think that it was the kind of departure point? Uh, it's one of the many. So it's so writing is a symptom. It's not a cause, really. So writing was a symptom of a way of thinking. So you know, there are thirty-two symbols that go back fifty thousand years and so in caves. So they they are symbolic representations. The idea of using those for control. Of other people is is what comes about with writing. So writing is inevitable as soon as you have a centralized state because it's needed for bureaucracy. And then it, you know it goes all the way to the Jacquard Loom and computers of today. They're still trying to get control of the uncontrollable. Um, do you mind if I just? And all it's is the problems getting bigger. The problem space is getting bigger as they try. Uh, yeah, what I wanted to ask you um, was thinking about the evolution of the beginning of writing do you if we, if we go back to the uh, the cave drawing the cave up that we discussed um, um, quite some time back and the kind of uh, uh, spiritual journey that was being reenacted or, or played out in in these caves um, do, do you do you see that as being quite distinct or as part of a progression from drawing to pictographs to writing as, as a kind of a process of progression or or would you you divide off that kind of mystical art going on in those caves is, is quite a separate activity? Uh, no, no, it's writing as a perversion of that. So, the, so, so you see... The way it is, you see, what they're doing in the caves is not writing. They're doing reflection. So you, you must imagine the guys are sitting against... So so I'm, I'm, I didn't quite finish what I was going to say about Sophie, so I better say it. The, the thing about it is not control of the, the alien cortex and that. It's transformation. So it's transcendence. So it is our vehicle for, to transcend ourselves. So it's, it's of its metamorphosis. The aim of the... The alien cortex is to metamorphosis. It's a tool for metamorphosis. Right? So, so okay, so now back to the case. What they're doing in there is metamorphosis. What they're doing is they, they, um, they, they're engaged in metamorphosis. What they, what, my interpretation is the shamans in the caves are, um, are doing this rebirth ceremony. And, uh, and that metamorphosis is done by reflection. So they're sitting looking at the walls and they're doing pattern recognition. They look, you can see them looking at the natural features and rock. They, they're treating it like a Jackson Pollock or some, some kind of artwork. And they're seeing, uh, it's, it's really a, a chaotic field. And that through, if you look at a chaotic field, like for example, the Old Testament is a chaotic field, super of ideas. It's just a chaos of philosophy. And then, so what's the point of that? Is that if you look at one of those chaotic, what I'm is your intelligence. So it's it's your pattern. So if you want to see the patterns in your head, you can't look at other patterns. You have to look at a random field, and then you'll start to see, you know, like shapes in the clouds and stuff like that. So they're doing. That's what they're doing in the art. They're looking at a wall, and they they 
it's a way of inter visualizing what's going on internally by externalizing it in a mirror. So, so it's a way of, in, in some respects, it's a way of the, the, so in, in some respects, it's, it's a, a way um, of uh, speaking to the other four layers. So the alien cortex is very alien. It is isolated. It is kind of a, you know, the reason why I call it the alien cortex is is also because it's it's closed. It's isolated in itself. It's a closed mind. Um, and so so it's talking to the four layers. The four layers are connected to the universe. They they sense and our sentience is in the four layers. It's not in the alien cortex. But the, the four layers cannot really see themselves and interpret themselves. They, they're fully immersed in the subjective experience, in the qualia and, and that kind of thing. And so uh, what the alien cortex allows you to, to interpret and look back at that, and that's what they're doing on the cave walls. They can start to see all these, what Jung would call like archetypes inside themselves. And so, so it's a it's a mirror. It's a, it's a mirror. This is what they're doing now. By the time they get to writing, they're not using it for writing. They're using it for tax collection and control. So the the thing is to hold people to account. They're using it as an infallible witness to to bind other people in a contract. So you see, if you if there's a very it's ties together all seamlessly with, say, if you go back to the Mithraeum and if you go back to Mithras and you look at the Tauroctony. Myth Mithras is Orion in the night sky. There you see, again, they're looking at the night sky and they're seeing, you know, asterisms and zodiac, signs of the zodiac and stuff. They're seeing this story in, in the night sky. What, what they're doing is the same thing. They're seeing the other four layers of our brain. You see, they're like the mammalian brain is Ursha Major. The alien cortex is, you know, the torus. All of these things are, <laughs> are parts of internal then projected outwards onto, onto the stars for interpretive pur purposes. Now, if you look at Mithras, Mithras is the, uh, the hero, he's Orion, but Orion is the headless hunter, <laughs> basically our Cro-Magnon side. And so, so the, uh, Mithras is killing the bull. Right. Mithras is, if you see in the night sky, the reason why they're looking at Orion and Taurus is because it, it makes sense in terms of our own psychology. Is, is our alien cortex is forever, um, you know, our, basically Orion is us, the self, you know, that's who Mithras is. He represents our ego or you know, self with a big S or something. But he's always facing off for eternity against Taurus in the night sky. And that's what the metaphor is about. So in the toroctomy, you clearly that's what they're teaching people. But is is he is killing the bull? So that killing of the bull is the transformation. So you have to kill off your alien cortex to transform it. It doesn't die. That's the spoiler. <laughs> in the if you if you you see done wrong, you put a gun to your head and blow your left temple out. That's the wrong trying to formation. That is what it's trying to make you do, right? So it's a perversion. A lot of what the transsexual people are that, that doing is they, they are also doing a perversion of this metamorphosis. So it's saying they know something is wrong, and then they, they all, you know, again, the alien cortex will do, you know, inversion and then substitution and then uh, de deflection, diversion. So, so a lot of the transsexual things, I think, are a diversion from true transformation. It's saying, my life is all fucked up. Why? Because I'm really a woman. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an imposter in this body. So I'm in the wrong body. That's what it is. And then basically the fix is you go and cut your balls off or something. It's like, whoa, dude, that's all fucked up, man. You've got to, you've got to transform the thing that you've got to do the internal transformation without making any irreparable move, any any kind of basic. You mustn't allow the alien cortex to do that, get out of jail. You see, it's a, it's a diversion. It's basically, it's, it, 
it saves itself by saying, no, no, uh, don't kill me, cut your balls off instead. So that's, that's what it's doing. It's substituting the legitimate transformation, which is the killing of the alien cortex, for this fake ritual, which is, you know, sexual transition. So it, the transition to, to enlightenment is, is what it's trying to avoid because it has no place after that. It's, the alien cortex is fighting for its life. It is our ego. So it, it has to die to go through this transformation. And that's what the shamans are doing in, in these caves. They're killing the alien cortex. All of those things, if you, all the interpretation of, of like the Shovi cave, if you look at the Lascar cave and that, you can reinterpret it over and over again. It's recipe for rebirth. Why? How does the rebirth work? By killing, by killing this current alien cortex 1.0. It, it, so the, the thing is, the miraculous thing is, if you kill it, it suddenly doesn't die. It's, you know, the, it turns into a butterfly. So <laughs> basically, it's the, the chrysalis turns into a butterfly. It doesn't really die. But we're trying to stop the chrysalis from dying, and the, the butterfly can't come out. And so the, a lot of what the AI stuff is doing is to try to keep us infantile, trying to stop transformation, trying to stop change. And, uh, but the more you do it, the more it happens. The more you pursue AI, the, the more you can see that it's not intelligent. The more you can see it's cargo culting intelligence. And in that insight is the transformation, the mass transformation. Now, here's the sad bit is that this this epiphany that we're trying to have this transformation we're having is it's a mess because we've fucked up the world so badly and ai will fuck it up more but we fucked up the world so badly that the price of this enlightenment is going to be you know basically a deathbed epiphany so at the at, at the end of a human race we're going to go extinct soon man. there's no there's no <laughs> No question, but it's we're going to have a deathbed epiphany because the when you see the the real use of AI is for us like the Apollo eight that Earthrise picture to see ourselves. So if we can see the part of that would if we could see ourselves if it if AI didn't enlighten us and make us intelligent, part of that would be putting AI aside. We, we would be smart enough to, to understand that the pursuit of AI is, is an illusion. It's basically what we're trying to do is, is unhealthy. It's basically, we, we are, the, so the, the, the completion of AI, uh, its service to us, if it was done properly, was to convince us that all these pursuits of things like AI, the application of AI is pointless. And that, that 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 would be its ultimate use, but the problem is, is it, it looks to me that that we're learning these lessons too slow. You see, we we still think of AI as intelligent. We, this this the the message is getting across. We we're not reaching that epiphany fast enough when you look at all the the climate and ecological. So 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 the the patient is dying, the Earth is dying. And we're accelerating that death because we're not we're not um, managing to to achieve our, our metamorphosis quick enough. So so we will re achieve that metamorphosis. I mean, somewhere there's going to be some fuck poor bastard who's going to be sitting on a rock looking at the sunset, the last man or woman alive, and going to be looking back on all of this. You know, kind of like that movie, you, you, Gary. You know that that movie where the the, the, um, the quiet earth. The the, one, the New Zealand one. Human knowledge and the, the, the New Zealand one? Where, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, the quiet earth. Yeah. yeah. It, it, that's going to happen to us because we know it's going to happen to us because it happened to the Neanderthals. The last Neanderthal was in Gorham Cave and watched the sun go down for the last time on the species. But that, that Neanderthal must have had an epiphany. But um, you see how tragic it is. It's just what price, Jesus man! Can't, you you just want people to say, for fuck's sake, guys, get more intelligent, but they can't. We, we're stuck. We're we're stuck in this ego. It's it's basically an abortion. It's a failed birth. We 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 cannot do 
I'll read both. It's that, that all this thing. See the the trans energy transition. All of these things are substitutions for this psychological transition. So they all birth pains, but but this birth is failed. I, I we we've <laughs> we created our, our species has created. So so it's it's like when will we get another chance to do this? It's like. I don't know, man. I don't think we will. It takes so long, took us so long to get to here, and we 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 value it so little. Well, you've got. I I don't know. I don't. You think know. Yeah. I don't think we'll get another chance in the age of this universe. We have to wait till the next universe. Yeah. Well, just from the point of view of uh, having removed from the surface of the earth basic things that, that a basic society of the future would no longer have access to. You know, you, you, um, we've mined everything. Uh, I think even Terence McKenna said back quite a long time ago, you know, that, uh, that, that the next civilization can't do anything until it figures out how to get one mile below the surface of the earth because that's, that's the horizon of, of resources. Um, yeah, the, the first... You know, the first rule of dying early is to stay alive. There's no point in dying early if you die. The point of dying early is to stay alive. So you... we fucked up because we're not going to live. Um. We fucked up on rule number one of transformation. Okay. I'm coming the, the, in. Oh, hold it. I'm coming in. Go on. Hugh, now hearing you all talk, in the conversation, I'm going to try and turn this around, what I've done. We're talking about cave art. Can't. Hold it. Cave art. Can't do it. But I've got Wait, so you haven't work. got your camera on, Greg. Greg, you haven't got no, your camera on. on. No, I want. I really don't want my camera on. Uh, what a pity. No, I can't, look, I'm at it. But I've done an amount of work uh, in the conversation uh, with cave people, and I'm a cave. So I'm a whatever. We live in the same century, but I've done quite an amount of work. Um, I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do? I'm going to send it to Gary. What I've done in the conversation. Well, this is just yep. in the conversation. Send just, send it to me, Greg, and I'll yeah, email that, it to that, everybody who's doing. here. I'm, yeah, I, okay. Oh, okay. Now, do okay. you mind if I, I – I mean, let's send the speaker off. Yeah, turn the speaker off and just send the email, and I'll Yeah, I'll that's what I'm doing. Okay, all right. That's what okay. I'm doing. Okay. So uh, let my alien cortex interpret what Greg is doing. So, so, so – my understanding of the way that Greg works is Greg is in, you know, uh, his alien cortex takes a back seat. So he's, uh, his thinking is in the other four layers. And that, that is where our intelligence is. So in other words, we've got it all upside down again. It's like Stephen Hawking and all these guys and you know, Einstein and that all in the left brain temporal lobes. That's the stupid part. So, so you see, if you go back and look at these things, uh, you'll see it. You see, uh, I saw some somebody on Reddit or something say that um, they they were, were students, and they say, and they in an essay they speculated, you know, what it would be like to have a thought without words, and the professor marked them down and said, like, you can't have anything thoughts without words, just like you can't play baseball without a bat and ball. And he said, like, whoa, dude. And, and this guy agreed with his professor. He said, of course, it's so obvious. I should have seen that. But even in saying it's so obvious, I should have seen that. He's saying about the other four layers, the, the, the layers that are not playing with a bat and the ball. So all thought, all genuine thought. There's no, so the alien cortex is super dumb. It's not creative. There's no insight that Stephen Hawking had. 
if Stephen Hawking was a genius and he, he you know, did, figured out black body radiation and stuff, I guarantee if you go and look at it, he picked it up from a conversation somewhere in the environment, some, something somebody said triggered him off, or basically, or it was some insight that he had in other four layers. And then the interpreter, the alien cortex, comes and claims it. And, and then makes out, you know, what, every scientific paper does this. There's a deep insight that is outside the alien cortex, it's outside the box. Then guys go and write a paper, they sprinkle a little mathematics uh, on it just so that the alien cortex can claim it. And they, may, they pretend in all these papers that the alien cortex is much sheer cognitive work. So in other words, by having the cogs turned, I came up with this paper. And here's the maths to prove it. It's a lie. It all came from an intuition that then got decorated with the alien cortex bullshit. So in yeah, other words, the, we uh, think the, without, we play baseball all the time without the bat and the ball. The bat and the ball mm -hmm. is superfluous to baseball. And that's what these people can't understand. The, the thing is, the uh, you know, you have an idea appear in your head. And, uh, you know, if you're really honest about an idea when it when it, when you become aware of it, you didn't do anything. It's you 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 can't, in all honesty, claim this is something you did or that you made happen, uh, or, or which you can claim responsibility uh, or um, um, you know accolades for. But that, that's where the 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 that's where the alien cortex jumps in and says, oh. Uh, well, this, you know, we apply a bit of logic and say, well, this must have come from somewhere. And you look around, and there's nobody else in the room. And so you say, well, I did that. Um, but that's also a, a, a language trap of thinking, too, that, that uh, the alien cortex becomes aware of an idea that you just had that appeared from nowhere. Uh, it will tend to think in words. And language kind of demands that if something appeared, then something must have made it appeared, and and therefore, you know, we assume that that something is is what I call I, um, instead of being honest about yeah, it and saying, see. well, you know, it just can't, it's just there, you know, you, you're not responsible for it. Uh, so yeah, let's go through that in a bit of depth. So. You're absolutely right. Our language betrays us because we say we were inspired. So that that comes from in spirit. It comes from breath. It comes from. It's so in other words, the word, you know, I was inspired by that. It says I breathed it in, which is a giveaway to say it didn't come from my alien cortex. I, it's what the alien cortex is saying with the word inspired was it wafted in on the other four layers. Now you got to say, well, where did the other four layers? get it from? Where does the intelligence come from? And here it gets very interesting very fast. And this is why it's valuable to look at intelligence. Well, you said it earlier. Exactly you know, is intelligence. intelligence is the universe. I mean, back, you know, 15 minutes it ago. Is, it yeah. is. But, but, but here's, here's the amazing part, is that clearly it was evolved. So, you know, it's in a way, you, anything, you know, black body radiation, <laughs> the, the things, is, is our brain evolved to come up with that? And you say, well, that's a bit of a stretch. It's like hunter-gatherers and our evolutionary past has no need of uh, black body radiation. You say, yeah, but it's repurposing something else <laughs> it had a need for. And here it gets really weird because really... Our blueprint, if you use that metaphor of our DNA, it only has like 30,000 genes or something. Now, the current estimate is 70 to 80 billion neurons. So, so, so the essence of us, basically our genetic code, has expanded to 70 billion genes. That's far too little information to expand into. So in other words, you can't map the intelligence in a static form on 70 billion, you know, you can't take 30, I can't compress the 70, the information to position 70 billion in a genetic string that's only 30,000 base pairs, or 30,000 genes, not base pairs. Um, so, so you say, what the hell is going on? Well, obviously the 
gene is expanded into the 70 billion neuron. So, but how? How is there somewhere this black body radiation is, is in? And you say, well, it's, it's um, the, the intelligence is uh, in the rules that it's using. So it's, it's using the rules dynamically. So for, for example, it's, let's take something like, uh, like reason. Okay, so if you, if you take AI, and all these kind of neural nets, why are they going up a blind alley? Is because AI is not, the neural nets are not reasoning. They, they're mimicking somebody that reasons. So for example, if I, if I give it a training set of gorillas, I think Gary might've mentioned this before, is it like, uh, you know, it, it can do a very good job of, you know, cargo culting a person picking out gorillas from an image. But it, you just tweak a little bit and you find out, oh shit, what it was actually doing was it was looking at the green in the background. It just so happened that the training set, all the gorillas were in a jungle setting, so it was green. So it said anything, any black thing with a green background is a gorilla. Is what that's what it's really filtering. So now a two-year-old knows wouldn't make that mistake. Because a two-year-old would reason that the background is irrelevant. So like the green background's irrelevant. The thing that's relevant is the gorilla. So how does the two-year-old know it? It knows that by two. Now that's amazing. I mean, you, for the AI at all the Moore's law speed, it cannot come up with that kind of reasoning. Right. So in other words, oh, uh, you know that kind of reasoning. Then you say, how how does the two-year-old get to that? Well, it must be applying some basic principles. Is some parts are evolved and then some parts are are wired up based on the rules. So you it, it's this so there's enough evolution to give it the seed that it, essentially what Chomsky calls the language module and stuff is that if you look at child development, the, the child is developing far too fast and gaining gaining knowledge far too fast. Uh, to to be explained by you know a fixed uh, evolution. So in other words, the brain is designed by evolution. But there's not enough information to say that it's you know it's it's has to be organized this way. So there's not enough information to organize it. So it must be self-organizing. And you can see what it's doing is is somewhere in the intelligence of our genes, it has a big enough expansion for the baby, the infant, to recognize, say, its mother's face first. So it it's very good at recognizing faces. Babies are very good at recognizing faces. So is, you might say, has our genes hardwired recognition of faces into, you know, infants, so that, you know, then you would make up some bullshit Darwinian evolution crap like, oh, you know, that must have survival value because the baby would imprint on the mother. It's like bullshit. <laughs> Horseshit. I'll, I'll tell you what the baby's probably doing. It's basically it's very easy for the the developing brain to develop a recognition of symmetry. It's an easy trick for, for nature to do. So it's looking at symmetry. And you could test this. If you want to test this. This is a kind of cruel experiment, but you could you could get a baby to imprint on something other than its mother's face if you just gave it more symmetry. So it's it, the brain is designed to do a very simple trick, and that's basically fixate on symmetry. So to be interested on symmetry. Okay, so so babies are fascinated by symmetry. Then from that, it quickly from exploration gets symmetry is important. This is a salient. The mother's face is important. The background is irrelevant, it's noise. So a baby's not doing what AI is doing. When a baby looks at that picture of the gorilla, it's basically saying, saying, okay, this is symmetrical. Focus on that. And it's reinforcing that. So in other words, there's a lot of feedback in the recognition. Whereas the AI, is, they are getting better at getting around this, but in general, the, the perceptrons one way through this network, it's just a filter. And so, and so it's it's fundamentally not doing the same thing. But the, but uh, yeah, it's it's easily proved that you can take these basic some uh, organizing principles 
self-organized crit criticality, all those kind of things is 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 part and parcel. And you say what comes across again and again and again. It's it's the thing that I said in the Darwin videos. It's it's that kind of evolution. It's it's focal points of attraction and repulsion. It's um, uh, it's feedback loops and it's filters. So you, you you can just say you make a system that does does those right, and and intelligence will will evolve out of it just very quickly um, through an infinite. But it, but it's entirely embodied. So in other words, implied in that is it's absolutely embedded in the environment. You, you cannot, so, so we are really a hologram of the intelligence around us. We are fundamentally not a box of intelligence in a dumb world. So you, you can see this, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll give you another example in case I'm boring you to tears. But so, so I can see this, okay, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something that I'm, I might regret. Is I don't wanna help AI guys further their stupidity. So i really reluctant to say this in case some AI guy saw this and used it. But anyway, if, if you are that guy, I will hunt you down and kill you. <laughs> so, but okay, so here's, you take a principle of how do you make AI better? Well, first of all, it's coming straight from alien cortex. So you just apply a simple thing, it's inverted. So inverted and say, see what these guys are doing is they're thinking they will get more and more complex and at some, stage consciousness will emerge we'll we'll have intelligence and consciousness will emerge so so the guys who did like i think it was deep mind and stuff they had a motto and the motto was first solve intelligence once we've solved intelligence intelligence solves everything else in other words if we can just nail down intelligence in other words put intelligence in a box then we can use that box to fix the world you see how fucked up that is it's completely upside down because you're trying to put the universe in a box and then use that box to fix it. It's just so stupid. It's just, but these guys cannot see themselves. They have no self-awareness. But okay, so, okay, you stupid Vogon, if you're out there. Simple trick is, you know you AI is, so the alien cortex is brainchild. The alien cortex inverts everything. So you know that this idea of saying we get more and more complex until we reach consciousness. Eventually, it'll be so complicated, it'll be conscious. No, it's exactly in. You've got to start with the qualia. You've got to start with the feelings. In other words, you know, the, our brain, five-layered brain, the top layer is super dumb. As you go down, it gets more and more intelligent. So in other words, the intelligent is in the fish brain. It's actually, it's, it's, the fish brain is much more in touch with the universe. So if you wanted to make more sm smarter AI, what you do is you just get modules and you make a primate brain module and you make a mammalian brain module and you make a reptilian brain module and you make a fish brain module. Start with the fish brain. The fish brain, the fish's world is full of qualia, it's full of feelings and stuff. You see, like Wittgenstein said, like, you know, if we if we could um, if a lion could talk, we couldn't understand it. Crap. Horseshit square. Basically, if a lion could talk, it would mean it had an alien cortex. If it had an alien cortex, it would have the interface that we use for the four other brain layers to communicate to each other. So it's lie. It's a complete crap idea. So he's saying, you know, what they're saying and what the Gestalt theorists and all these guys said is, we could not understand a fish. You must not personify animals. They, we cannot understand it. It's like, oh, crap, absolute crap. Your alien cortex can't understand it because it's stupid. But we got a fish inside us. You can understand a fish. You want to understand a fish's world? It's all feelings. It's all emotions. It's all sensitivity. It's, it's whole body as an ear. So it's it's basically it's all raw emotion. So I I must share this with you because the the more I stay at sea, the more fascinated I get by fish, and the more I'm more impressed I am. And see, they they are intelligent. Now they are the epitome of intelligence. And now why you see now a neurologist or behaviorist or ethologist or something animal they say like. You know, these guys study fish. They say, oh, you know, put a fish in a petri dish and they say, 
put a big shadow here, the fish goes left because, you know, it moves away because it thinks it's a predator. Make the, the shadow small enough, it thinks it's food. It goes towards it. They think in a very mechanical way, and they say, look, a fish has got so few neurons, it's like, come on, this is not intelligence. And so you're missing it. You're absolutely missing it. Fish, fish are psychic, man. They're very, very intelligent. If the, I spend a lot of time in the water with them playing. You see, you don't think fish are, are, are smart because you see them in a fucking goldfish bowl. You see them in a box. You see them in a fucking tank. So they, so here's the ocean is a brain. So by taking a fish out and trying, you know, reducing it to its intelligence and wiring it up with electrodes and stuff, in effect, you, a neurologist is getting, you know, a neuron out of the brain. So this, the ocean is the brain. The fish is like a neuron. So it's, it's as stupid as getting a neuron out of the human brain and going, I've heard these things can do poetry and can sing and write Shakespeare. And you keep on shocking it with electrodes and say, it doesn't do fuck all. This is stupid. This, these, this is, how does it do it? It's like, like, because neurons are not smart. So in other words, the fish is like a neuron and the ocean is like a brain. Think of it more like that. So you, you see, we, we take these things out of context. You take a fish out of the ocean, put it in a tank, and then say, these things are stupid. No, you're stupid. Have a look. Okay, have a look at everybody that I can see in this thing. You're in a box too. You're just like a fish. We are getting stupider and stupider because we are like a goldfish in a tank. The goldfish, if the fish is in the ocean, it would be part of a super intelligent system. But we're exactly the same. We're in a fish tank. Every one of you, look around. You're in a box. So that's what the alien cortex has done. It put you in a box like it's put a fish in a fish tank. And then it said, oh, this fish is stupid. No, you're stupid to take it out of its brain. The brain is the ocean. So you can see the more you interact with fish and stuff, the more you can start to see this, this stuff. It look, and it, you, the more you can see that it doesn't, intelligence doesn't exist in isolation like that. Hugh, yep. the, the, so I, I'm just wor wondering whether we need to be a little bit more rigorous about words, it, it distinguish between a, a, a brain and consciousness um uh and intelligence because you know you're saying that you can take the the, the separating the fish from its brain but i i would look at it that the the the, the, the fish is like a a a localization of a larger consciousness um a, like a local expression of a, of a larger consciousness um that can be represented by the ocean and then the earth and then everything else, you know, the rest of the solar system. Um, does that, uh, is it? Yes, that that, that's, that's quite an advanced insight. So it's, it's holographic. So, so what these things are showing over and over again is that, that they recapitulate themselves. And the only way to systems that do that are, are fractal. So I say that, you know, that's why I call that the theory of evolution, the fractal theory of evolution, because it's, but even that's not quite right, because fractal itself is to do with measuring sticks. And it's saying, you know, if you, as you scale up and down, it's, it's scale invariant is the way to think of fractal things. And it's saying, even that's not quite right. That, that is a digital kind of interpretation. The, the, the scaling up and down is a digital interpretation. Is the, the way, the, the more correct way to see it, I think, is to think in terms of that it, it scales without limit. So, so in other words, there's no stopping place to say uh, this scale or that scale. Or it's, that's a, a very false notion that there is some scale of observation. It's observations done at all scales. So, so in other words, it, observation goes down to the Planck length at least, and probably further. So, in other words, consciousness goes down beyond the Planck length, and it's not—it's not fanciful to say that because they—they they, you, you can see in terms of the um, oh, bye. <laughs> uh, you can see in terms of uh, things like 
um, you know, in, in, like quantum effects. You know, I, even 10 years ago, they said that the brain's just neurons and they do spiky electric shit. And now they found, no, there are lots of quantum effects. They found the quantum effects in photosynthesis and in, in the microtubules in your brain, they're quantum effects. So as soon as you say that, well, it's implied the self-organized criticality, it's, it's uh, fractality, chaos, self-organization, all of those are implied. And you say, well, is, uh, is silicon doing that? Is a computer doing that? Isn't it? No. So silicon cannot get down there because it has to be discrete. We got to the end of Moore's law already because we're starting to get to quantum effects. So in other words, again, that's inverted. You've got to start from quantum effects and then move up. You've got to, the fish is um, inside the fish's brain is quantum effects. That's that's why they semi psychic. So yeah, it's. I'm it's, just wondering. We've got to, whether. No, I, I know because you know you've talked about that a bit, um, and uh, it's strange. I mean, maybe it's just the way I approached spiritual inquiry from the beginning. I just found that personally, I was happy to just accept that consciousness, whatever its true nature might have been, was was the prima mater, was all pervasive. And that we wouldn't ever be able to really visualize it, because all the description of the quanta and and, and the the the, uh, the 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 fractals down to Planck length dimensions and all this kind of thing, um, in a way, they're attempts to try and visualize something. Um, and uh, I'm wondering whether we, we might have to abandon that, you know, and, and just at some stage accept. Consciousness is as sort of unknowable as to its substance, and yet pervading. No, no, no. Consciousness is noble. No, consciousness is bullshit. So the idea of consciousness is 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 bullshit. It's the same as like free will. It's a it's a nonsense concept. It's it's like you know an angel or how you know. And talking about consciousness is is like debating how many angels fit on the head of a pin. They, they're both imaginary concepts. So, so consciousness is uh, is bullshit, and by that I mean is is like it doesn't exist. The uh, and not in the sense of strong AI and weak AI and all of this bullshit. I mean in this sense, is the the universe is uh, is the conscious entity, right? Let's let's say let's start from a false premise and then get to a true one. So the universe is the conscious entity. The, the price of, ex, you know, consciousness implies experience of something. It's been sentient and it means basically you, you have to be knowing. So knowing of something else. So there's the only thing in the universe, the only thing to know is itself. It's, you know, there's nothing outside the universe, so it has to know itself. And it knows itself basically by this weird concept of kind of individuality as kind of solipsism. But so the price of of observation, in other words, the price of sentience or the price of consciousness, consciousness is identity. So the only way for the universe to to experience itself is by having an identity, basically having being localized and being limited. But as soon as it's limited, closed, and that, it's it's no longer the full universe. It's just a, a part of the universe. So you have this involution of this illusion that the part is the whole and, uh, you know, that the universe is compressed into our head. But it's just a model. A, and it's, it's, a, it's a finite model and it's, you know, girdle incomplete. It's basically inconsistent or incomplete, necessarily so. So let me, let me give you one observation to make this a bit clearer. Take, for instance, um, okay. Here's a difficult one. Let me see if I can pull this off. Uh, when they examine intelligence, one of the things is they're saying, well, molds are intelligent. They say slime mold is intelligent. Say, well, how do you come to this conclusion? And they, well, they say, like, give it a maze. So the test of, you know, intelligence in a rat or something, they give it a maze, like, you know, like Claude with the kind of Theseus, the mouse and stuff, is basically they, they you know, navigating a maze 
it, you put a, a reward somewhere in the corner of the maze and it gets through you know this this you know, intelligent entity it's goal oriented the maze is a context it navigates the context to get to the goal that's what Ryan was talking about. It's you know goal oriented within the limited con context with the artificial intelligence. So, so okay, that's how they look at a rat's intelligence, and so then they say, well, well hang on, a mold can do this too. Now, what happens is the mold just explores everywhere. It just the mold isn't designed to be intelligent. They just put a reward, say sugar or something, in one corner of the maze. The mold goes everywhere and spreads out until it reaches the sugar, then it starts pruning all the other branches, and you get this perfectly optimized route through the maze where it passes sugar back to its origin. So, so then you say, well, it's here. You can clearly see that it found the optimal route to the sugar, so therefore it's intelligent. Now, compare that because they're saying, well, that's done the same job as a rat. Not really. Put yourself in the in the rat's position. The rat isn't doing that kind of exploration. So in other words, the mold is part of the brain. So in other words, the mold is part of the brain maze, right? If you if you think of it that way, the rat in the maze is not navigating the maze in the same way. The rat has a model of the ma maze in its brain. So they can actually show this. They can uh, they put electrodes in them in the Rat's brain, they they can see how a rat na navigates space and how it orients in space, and they can see from the electrodes that it, it literally has a little model of the freaking world in its head, just like we do. So so when it's exploring, it's navigating the model, right? It's it's, it's a, kind of a derivative of the actual man. So you can see this. For example, I think this is correct to say, is if you got the mold and say altered it, say in other words, you cut it off and say change change the maze so that you know this path was no one of the paths that had chosen was no longer viable, block it off. Right? That that mold has no memory. The branch that's cut off, it would rediscover by the same process of branching, it would rediscover. Not so the rat. The rat would would still have a memory of the piece you cut off. In other words, it would get around the new obstacle. So the change you made to the maze, it would go, oh, okay, this is new, can't go this way. Oh, I have to go left, right, left, right. Oh, 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 hang on, I understand. I got it, I'm back where I started, and it would pick up with what it remembered of the rest of the maze. So in other words, if you made an alteration, it would get around that alteration and then be back on course. No, why? Because it's got a model in its head of the maze. The actual mold is part and parcel of the maze. So in other words, it's kind of for, first order intelligence. So that the rat has like second order intelligence. <coughs> now, you can say, well, hang on a minute, how far can that go? Well, might be infinite. But our alien cortex is like a third order intelligence. So in other words, it, it's like a rat that can observe itself. So it's unlikely the rat observes itself because it doesn't have an alien cortex. But by the time you have a cortex, a, the mammalian cortex, apes, you know, primates and stuff, <coughs> all have a cortex. They have self-awareness. And so they, they have enough brain capacity, so it's kind of like a third order. So, so, but it implies that there's a fourth order intelligence too. And so that's what the Ovid's metamorphosis, the shamanic metamorphosis, all these initiations and transformations, and so there's, there's a fourth order intelligence. So you can, see, so in other words, you can look at us doing AI and go, that is fucking stupid. That's like fourth order intelligence. But you see, we're stuck in third order intelligence where we still think AI is brilliant because we're too stupid to see what intelligence is. But the, the, you see, but using AI, we can investigate intelligence and consciousness, and then the, that can lead the four other brain layers into um, an epiphany of what they are. The, you see, they won't be able to describe it. See, the, the problem is that you cannot then put into words. So that this is a this is a production line thing that you know has been going on since the since we hybridized with Neanderthals. 
So it's that was a big problem for us because it was, you know, there was two types of of brains that were smushed together, and it was not a good fit. But it gave us an uh, that bad fit and the 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 tussle between those two, the antagonism between those two. It gave us a meta intelligence, in other words, another order of intelligence that supervenes on those. So, so the now that process of of reconciling the two and uh, transcending them was projection line by shamans and sages and all the thing, and we lost it. We lost the plot. But you see, even in like Zen guys, they're all trans, you know, transcended. That 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 level of intelligence, and so and but they cannot articulate, they cannot put into words what the vision. Uh, but they they can point, they can use words to say this crossover, that Look, crossover. In a way, in a way, that's what I was trying to say was that you know whatever the universe is, um, we're not we you can't ever say that. Um, you know, and we're, we're perpetually trying to, to, well, the only way we can communicate is with these inadequate things. Um, uh, sorry, I, you know, I don't quite know how to put it. Well, um, maybe well, may I you see the, the thing is that, may, may I just add something yeah, to what Gary is saying? Is that the meta intelligence that you that you're referring to? is such that it will manifest itself. For example, to go back to what we were saying at the beginning. Yeah, but it will manifest out of our, out of our, you see, for example, we were talking about pandemic at the beginning, all right? Th this is a manifestation of a meta intelligence that the alien cortex cannot see, that people are too stupid to, to look at from that point of view, but it's a manifestation. Do you, do you follow me, or do you see what I mean? I follow you, but you're wrong. <laughs> so, so the, we we're under the gun, right? We're, we're under the gun. So people are getting stupider and stupider, and they're getting more and more mechanical. So, so the the falcon is getting ever further away from the falcon. No, no, no I agree. In this with ever that. widening job. Yeah. I agree that we so, are stupider so, than so, so, yeah, but the chances of us achieving this transfer are going by them. Right? The more okay. we've, you cool. see, you see these guys, the transhumanists are fundamentally uh, turning themselves into machines. When they're machines, they're gone, right? They, they, they cannot, they cannot transform. The machine can't transform itself. And they're becoming mechanical. We, they're making us mechanical. What these systems mm. like the pandemic and, uh, and, um, all of these control systems, this e tyranny, it's it's all designed to make us stupider and I make us frog the machine. I, I think you didn't, you must have misread what I said. I was talking about meta intelligence, not artificial intelligence. And I'm saying that. No, no, I, no I'm saying the chances of us reaching the meta intelligence are going down. Yeah, yeah, no, because I'm saying the chances of us meeting yeah. the meta is going down. Yeah, okay, I guess. So, you, so in other words, we're, we're running out of the juice to get us there. Yeah. Yeah, but when you hear the general. We're, we're running, you see, we're oh, running okay, out of the ability to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see. But the general discourse at you the see moment what I mean, about, about this, these problems is I mean, pe mo the majority, let's say, I don't know, 90, 95% of people are not, um, are not able to. to like what Petra was saying at the beginning, you know, she, the, the apartheid is closing up. If you if you don't comply, you are you are uh, you are discarded or you are just put aside. And you 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 are even even in the middle of those people, even those people who are aside, they're still trying to cling on to a a narrative that is also erroneous in the ways of sort of sort of conspiracies and. They, you know, there's hardly, as you said, no hope that anyone would read through what the universe is telling us through this this um, this epidemic that we we actually started talking about at the beginning when we started these meetings 
um, because we were at the start of this lockdown and we were all um, in agreement that um, that the virus had a had a had a message and a, and probably that we had to follow it. If you remember. Oh, I'll do it that way. Do it that way. <laughs> Whoa. Ah, uh, do it that way. So, bit of technology. Oh, sorry. that's great. No, I'm sorry. I'm, look, I'm sorry. Look, I'm trying to be techno here. But uh, I want, look, in your first part, Q, um, what is, is everything gone or not? But I do. Yeah, think, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Gary has, I have done a draw, two drawings since in the program. Now, I'm going to do something. I don't know how to do this, but I'm doing it. But what? Oh, dear. No, it didn't work. Okay. Okay. It didn't work. Okay. So I'm doing something which you don't know. But look, talking about people, so I'm, oh, no. Oh, sh is there a way I could back off and not get into the conversation and watch what I do? Is that possible? Is that possible? Yeah, you? I thought that it was your modus operandi anyway. I beg your pardon? I thought that's what you did naturally. I, that's what I do. But I'm going to put the phone... I'm going to put the phone around. I don't want to be, um, I don't like looking at my face. That's my issue. But I'm just going to do what I'll do, if you don't mind. So I'm going to turn me off on the microphone. I'm getting high tech now. But now we can't hear what you're saying. Oh, okay, there you go. Again, uh, hot Hugh, you weren't supposed to not talk. You're supposed to be talking. Just, just can keep on going, and please. Oh, oh okay. Just, I see. I see. Okay, because I, I'm I'm a very private chat, so just bear with me, please. I'm going to turn the microphone off. Go back to the conversation, and just watch my hand. Okay. Do you mind if I go uh, verbally? Oh yeah. Okay. Now I've got what you're doing. Okay. I get okay, it. I'll... I get it. Yeah. Okay. So so. If, if people don't understand, that's just what I think Greg is doing. Is the um, uh, okay? So our way of thinking about art and stuff is is not the shamanic way. If you, if for example, there was one thing in that Werner Herzog's uh, Cave of Forgotten Themes, which was very very insightful. They, they ask uh, one of the the archaeologists um, about what what these people were doing in the caves that were actually drawing. And he says, well, you've got to think outside the box, outside the alien cortex. And he said, for example, like an anthropologist in, in Australia uh, was with an Aborigine who was, uh, you know, in a cave and they touched up some of the ancient drawings. And so he thought, well, this is a unique opportunity. You can ask them what, what he's actually doing. And he said, well, I'm not doing anything. He said, well, Anthropologist says, "Well, you you are you, you coloring in the thing." He says, "I'm not doing it." He says, "It does it," and then it's like blew the anthropologist away. But what I think the interpretation is that the anthropologist is um, looking at his alien cortex, and it is the other four brain layers. So the other four brain layers are speaking through the artistic hand and the picture. Um, and you say I and the alien cortex, that's the sense of ego. So 
it's the four layers talking to the ego is, is uh, the way that to interpret them. That's what I assume that Greg is doing now, <laughs> is that I'm talking from my alien cortex and Greg is communicating from the other four layers. Here, I, I wonder if that's what people are trying to do in a way with what they call art therapy, you know, just sort of um, letting something come out. Did, did you post something once a long time ago about uh, the sandbox um, things? I can't remember where that was. Do you know what I'm talking about? Sand play or something like that? Where you just have all these tiny yeah, little Jungian figurines and modern, Jungian, yeah, yeah, that's what it was, yeah. Um, that, that in a way that's providing a kind of a language and a way for the for the the uh, the the, uh, the other brain layers to express themselves. Uh, but I suppose then you still people will still want to then go back with their alien cortex and analyze it. And, try and interpret what it's trying to say. Um, so I suppose, I don't know what the, whether the outcome in the end is worth worthwhile. Well, um, uh, yes, it is. So, so, uh, so what, uh, what they would say, what Jung would say was the, the four other four layers are unconscious. So, you know, this Jungian sand play, it, brings the unconscious to consciousness and then that's the process of self-individuation which is another way of saying self-transformation or of its metamorphosis and so it's saying it's, it's a way of bringing out that metamorphosis is getting you know in touch with I, I don't really like the idea of the unconscious because it's not unconscious again if you go back to the fish brain is is all, uh, you know, when you feel sick or you feel quailier or happy or you're hungry or something, all of those is the world of the fish. So that, that we're intimately conscious with those. I mean, what um, if I punch you in the stomach or kick you in the nuts or something, you'll feel like crap. So it's like it's, it's very visceral. The world of the fish is not unconscious. It's very visceral. In fact, it's, you know, it's much more major than other. Is that, so in other words, if I ask you to uh, work out um, some mathematical problem and then I, uh, I poison you at the same time, you, the fact you feel sick will stop you working on the alien cortex problem very quickly. Because it's far I'm, more I'm just wondering whether, far whether the problem. use of... It's not unconscious at all. Yeah, but is, is the use of the word unconscious just rather unfortunate choice. I'm just wondering what the word just would have meant in German, which I assume is what um, um, Jung would have used, or whether it's got quite the connotation as it, it, that the word would have the same connotation in, in German as the word unconscious has in, in, in English. Uh, should do that, just as a matter of curiosity. Um, I, I think it's just an unfortunate in a term that doesn't really mean unconscious, you've got to reinterpret it as meaning the, the four other brain layers, uh, which I suppose we can do, but, you know, other people might not be aware that you should, be, should do that to understand it better. I, I think a very, a very yeah. good example of all this is, is, is in the domain of dance. I, I've been I've been all my life a dancer and I as a child and all the time, and I've been through the grind of people who try to impose um, figures and disciplines on dance. And I've been with people who are from other cultures who, who dance wildly. And, and uh, you know, that, that, is, that is exactly the manifestation of, of the four layers. Um, if, you, if, you really, if you really understand and if you really uh, embody dance, because it's body, it's body expression. And it's also without any, any way necessarily linked to music or ordained music or organized music it's it's more related to, to the rhythm that we perceive in our body of the of the of the universe around us and um uh i just wanted to say that that remain when what i see greg doing there is is making me think of dance is making me think of this 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 expression of the four layers that is absolutely cannot be that is isolated from the alien cortex totally isolated but the you said earlier Hugh that the the, the alien cortex is isolated from the meta intelligence 
um, but how can it um, how can it can it grasp it? Can it can it grasp even no, the concept no. because we're talking about it with our words? No, because no, because it's it's like the rat in the maze. It's, we have a model of of the universe, so it's it's partial, inconsistent. So um, it it can a, a, by approximation. So in other words, you can take a, a bad resolution picture of the cosmos, but you, you can't uh, do a deep fields view like the Hubble telescope, right? So it's, it's kind of like a wide aperture ca camera. So you, you've got a choice. You can either do a wide aperture, low information, or you know, very deep field, but then very narrow. And so it can only do one of those two, but it's got to do partial information. You, you see, what it's trying to do is square the circle. It, it wants deep knowledge, wide aperture. And it's like, no, because you're descending into unindexable data. So in, in other words, if you go that route, you're getting into Borges' infinite library. And you, can't, you won't be able to navigate that library. If, if I give you a wide field with infinite information, you you will be fucking lost. I mean, this was this was in the Bhagavad Gita. So Arjuna, the story is Arjuna on the battle of Kurukshetra. That's you know the battle between good and evil, between AI and humans, the battle of the robots. It's the early version of the robot wars. And so at the field of Kurukshetra, which is kind of like Armageddon field, then uh, Arjuna asks Krishna, God, for like, I really want to see the universe contained in it. And so you, you know, Krishna opens his mouth and he sees the cosmos and Arjuna is overwhelmed. That's what, what that's saying is he's, he's basically he's, he's having an epileptic fit. He's seeing too much. So in other words, he's got too much information, too, um, too wide aperture, too dense, and it's like overload. So, so Krishna said, like, I can show you as much as you like, but your little brain is going to be fried. Now, that, it's not a bad to attempt that because that frying of the brain is this metamorphosis of the alien cortex. So the more you try to understand, the more you pursue a wider vision and more depth, the more you will get to this bang moment where, where it's, 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 it's what I call eusychosis. So in other words, you will get that vision of... Yeah, um, sure. uh, of the universe, but, but you'll be fried after that. Your noodle will be cooked. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what the shamanic rebirth is. That's the proper transformation, which we're missing, by the way. <laughs> we're missing because we're becoming fascinated by ourselves. So it's, we're missing because we're, it's narcissism. So we're becoming fascinated with civilization, with, the, with these machines and stuff. It's our alien cortex being fascinated by itself. It's self-love. So, so it's scared and it's, it has this ambivalent relation, it's self-loathing. It's, it's creating these machines for control, but everything in, you know, becomes its opposite in the end with the alien cortex. So it's saying like, oh, I must have these machines. They're cool. They're lovely. It's me personified. Ooh, it's in love with it. It's narcissistic. But then at the same time, it's like, oh, but I'm evil. And um, I'm always strategizing and playing chess and trying to conquer the world. Maybe this will turn around and conquer me. So it's looking at itself, reflecting, this is dangerous, but it's awesome and lovely. It's me, but it's dangerous. And it's doing all this over and over again. While it, it, this is a neurosis, it's caught in a loop. So our whole civilization is in this loop with fascination with, with AI, which is not intelligent. In fact, stepping yeah, out of the loop isn't this be, like a... make that move. The, the more this goes on, the more we get stuck in our neurosis and the less chance we have of transformation. Don't, don't, wouldn't you get, uh, going back to what you were saying earlier about how the path that we've taken leads to transformation, but it's just kind of a deathbed transformation. Uh, but, you know, you've got the alien cortex caught in this feedback loop so, you know, like putting the microphone in front of the speaker and the frequency and the power just climb and climb until the, the thing, the amplifier blows up. Uh, 
I, I suppose is the the analogy. Um, do you mind if I just go back to the eupsychosis? Because um, in one of the other talks a few weeks ago, um, I described feeling, uh, you know, very distressed. And, you know, the typical response is when you're getting distressed like that is you try to find some way to alleviate your suffering. Um, and and I, uh, I said to you, well, in that circumstance, what would a person do? Would you deliberately exacerbate your distress until your little head popped? Um, uh, because it was kind of my understanding as what, of what you were saying about the the, the psychotic break. Um, as I understand it, the 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 only thing that separates the you psychosis from the mal psychosis is the context, the the fact that you understand what what's occurring to you, uh, like in the shamanic rituals or like the uh, ayahuasca ceremonies. Um, you know, when they're when they're done in their original context, um, it's not just a trip. It's because you understand it. It's got it's got an entire context in terms of your tribe and your your group and and your your upbringing and everything like that. It's not just a, a hippie trip, something to do on a holiday to, to South America for for a week. Um, uh, so this, I I guess you when I said that to you about exacerbating the point of distress until you had some kind of breakdown. You said, no, you don't want to pro provoke a male psychosis. Um, uh, uh, no, 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 no. So, so what yeah, I was that, reacting that's... against, yeah, yeah. Is what, what, what I was reacting against is, is the, what I heard you say was uh, implied trying harder. And what I'm what yeah. I was saying was you don't want to try harder. That trying harder thing is the wrong direction. Is to get to you psychosis, you need to let go. So in other words, we fight, 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 fight. And uh, you get this in you know ashrams and dojos and stuff where people think, try, 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 and, and they say like they don't get anywhere. And finally they say, I give up. I just this is fucking impossible. And then bang, then it happens. But it's it's when they let go. So, so what I heard in what you said was, we should I try harder, mm. make more pain, go, to reach you psychosis? I said mm. no. The other yeah. Way, yeah. You let go all of. Um. How? <sighs> yeah, I see what you mean. Because, for instance, I was thinking about your story about the, the people in South Africa who, you know, kill their families and themselves rather than face the new the new order when apartheid ended and all the rest of it because they couldn't. Yeah, r rather dead than red, that kind yeah, of thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but were we in exactly the same situation now? This is the danger. Yeah, you see, yeah, these yeah. guys are doing the AI, people like Pooh Bear and psychopaths like Bill Gates and Elon Musk. They, they they are rich billionaires right so so they um, they're doing the same thing as happened in South Africa is they they would uh, they'd rather be dead than uh, transform look I, so, I, I so might that's to... that's why they're dangerous because they'll take us all down rather than 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 lose so, so it's exactly the same thing as those Afrikaans farmers is it's so easy to go and transition into the new world it wouldn't have been bad it would have been a walk in the park but they couldn't do it psychologically. They couldn't give up their the, the heritage, their tradition, their belief system, what they've been told as kids. They could have said, like, what a load of shit. It's like what grandpa told me was horseshit. And and they could have given it up like like that. Instead, they shut they their families and stuff. And Those were maids. can't go into that. this new South Africa. Those were maids who did that, were they? Well, yeah, they were, uh, well, it's it's a male were, thing they, because it's it's alien it's cortex. A power thing. It's a yeah, it's, it's, it's a male a, thing because of the alien cortex. Yeah, but, but was, testosterone to, boosts the alien cortex. But that brought a, a thought on me because we had that conversation quite a while ago um, on um, differences male female in terms of um, of uh, connections and ego because I. 
I feel that in this group, like there's a few women that come in now and again, but some certain things that you talk about, I absolutely don't understand, but I have to make an effort to try to get the concept coming from a man's point of view, because I'm, I feel I'm deeply different in that line. Of course I am. And I don't pretend that I would be. And I, I kind of hold the, the idea from when I talk with other women, but when we are born as little girls and when we are very, as far as we remember, we have a very little ego. Uh, we have one, of course. I mean, I'm not saying that we don't, oh, yeah, well, I don't have an ego. I'm saying that it's a completely different way of operating. We have much more white matter in certain areas, which means more connections with the lower brain than male, who actually uh, perform a bit more in the term of darker gray matter. Uh, but um, I, I believe that... Um, the ego uh, in little girls is superimposed by civilization, school, etc., at a later stage in life. Uh, then boys seem to be much more equipped with it, whether it's come, whether it's genetic or whether it comes from education, and seem to have to fight much more to let go of the ego uh, because of their deep uh, need of power that doesn't exist so much in females. Power is what you've uh, been talking about uh, all the time through this conversation. Right, no. And I think that that would be, because it's very late in the meeting, but um, I would really like if there were some women who listen to us who could ref uh, uh, reflect on what I'm saying and maybe talk could, with me about this. Anyway. They I would agree with that comment. I would agree. I have never worked this before. Am I there or not there? Am I there? Yeah, you're there. It's beautiful. We can Fantastic. see all things. Okay, yeah. look, look, I do agree. This is something with Jermaine Gree. Do you know Jermaine Gree? Well, okay. But I do agree in society when men and women separate, it's wrong. I look at, uh, look at um, people need to I go to a hairdresser. All I go to a hairdresser, I have, I just, I do get abused of being a man. Oh, dear, I have to put it that way. Now, I, 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 no. but I, I, this is something I can't go with men against women. That is something I will not go with it. Uh, I think people, women and men, need to know one another. They need to know one another somehow but the corporations the legal industry makes men and women uh irrelevant and it's wrong it's unnatural mm. so i'm very yeah. passionate about that i agree so i agree mm. with, with, with both like... things but in, in terms yes yeah, so to answer you mm. that uh mm. I think the testosterone boosts the alien cortex. So, so what I'm doing is I'm really talking to males and talking to the alien cortex. So the uh, females are centered around the mammalian brain in, in general, and but it's boosted uh, by estrogen and, and, um, and, uh, and the fish. And the fish. Uh, yeah, other chemicals and stuff. And the fish, a lot. But yeah, big, but you see, but, but, but you have to... You have to watch out because um, the, uh, you know, in the in terms of the Afrikaners uh, committing suicide, the the women mm -hmm. are complicit. Uh, I, I, I'm reacting to the thing um, that you said. Well, it's mainly a male thing. It's 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 a very strange dynamic because the see the the women uh, are also complicit in it because they're saying save the children. So in other words, they they also don't want to go into the new South Africa. They would rather their children died than go into the new South Africa. And so they're they they they're screaming, save the kids. And the, the guy is like, well, there's nothing I can do. I can't change those broader events. The only way I can, you know, fulfill the mammal brain's demands is by killing them all. So they're kind of complicit. You can, you can see this in, say, the... But the Fuhrer yeah. bunker where Albert Speer uh, killed his children and his family. And he did it, you can see clearly with the complicity of his wife, because they didn't want to live in a, they said, they wrote it down, I mean, we didn't want to live in a non-Nazi Germany. Now, the, I do agree. But, 
the the same the same the same applies um, uh, to you know if you look in like Jim Jones, if you it's well worth going and looking at the okay. transcripts of when those guys were committing suicide. So, uh, Greg, do you mind just muting a bit? Uh, so, oh, the thanks. So, uh, when when you go when you go. Um, and look at those transcripts. You can clearly see what's happening. And what the women are saying is very, very interesting. But what, in essence, they're saying is the kids are going to be taken away from them. After they killed that senator guy or that congressman, um, they say, well, now they're going to send in the troops and they're going to drop them. And the women are saying, like, well, can't we go to Russia and can't we get a plane out of here? And, and so the, and they, they're saying, you know, it's saving the children. They're talking about saving the children. And John says to them is like, no, it's like wherever we go, we're going to be persecuted. We're, the only way we can es escape the pain, the only way we can stop the children's pain is by killing them. And the, the women, in essence, go along with it. Hugh, um, Thank you. I, I, I have no problem with that. I'll let you talk. I, I, I understand very well what you mean. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's a it's a flawless process but I, what i'm saying is that the point of view of the conversation to me is is also uh, is very centered around power um that is a concept that is not central to, to to females and i would like it would be very interesting that more females in in in, in interact a bit more in the conversation because I, I might i would like to know if if we if they experience the same difficulties in grasping certain concepts no, no, because no. it's far beyond our oh. our understanding. Okay, look, Q, do you want to interrupt here? Because what happens, they, hold it, people need, both sexes need to be people. But what, in my life, uh, uh, women control everything where I live. They're in total control. Total. So I, I was trying to say the same. I was going to say the same thing, but I was trying to yeah. phrase it diplomatically. Here, I think. <laughs> Thanks for um, saying it for me. I might need to Thinking that, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a very interesting. There's a difference of power there. That's There's a difference of power. No, 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 okay. I know but what you mean. Okay, in Australia, the female is the dominant species. You marry. You have sex. Yeah. I'm trying to say to blokes, you do. I look at women and I think, oh, I don't want to go to jail because you in this in this country, you can go to jail on a hearsay and they have got everything. See, I, I look, Jermaine Greer, do look up Jermaine Greer. She is not a sexist, but um, that uh, she's a good person. But uh, in this country, the feminization in this country is through the roof. And I, I find it very offensive as a bloke. It's a bloke uh, thing because I'm a, I do exist as a male, so I'm female dominated in this country, and then we got nutters in this country with the politicians, and my God, go no further. But and why on earth in this country we were we were intelligent, and then we've got nutters in politics. I am disgusted with the country. But look, what in the... Uh, so, okay, in the so, mm, sorry. Mm, so, oh, oh, I'm looking at myself. Oh, wow. I, I, I'm just reluctant to get into the gender wars because, you see, I, 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 I never normally we negotiate need, this we territory. Need to work you, you quickly wind up in the gender war. Right? Um, uh, here, I, won't so, go, so, so, I won't go there. I won't go there because we need to work together. Uh, that's that. Well, I, I, would, I, would, I would say we need so. we need transcendence. So, so again, it's misapplied. We need we need transcendence. So we need observation and wisdom. So we need transformation. The the gender wars are more of the same, right? So, and I never go there because it's part of the neurosis. It's going round and round. And so Sophie expressed this Good. thing about power relationships, but the the. Is you don't want to really go down that route because if if you look at power, you like say was a you know this by 
was indigenous were indigenous people matriarchies or oh, patriarchies oh. and all of this kind of crap? Oh, 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 and you say like you, you oh, can't look at it that no, no, no. hang on Greg the you're saying but you can't really look at it that way because is if you look at the patriarchy or any kind of rule like that is what they struggle with the definition but the definition is easy it's it's like who has the ability to um to implement pleasure or pain to the collective in other words who has the who has the ability to dole out punishment and reward and that that's my definition of power it's basically it's uh, and if you if you look at it that way then it's very deceptive about who has the upper hand so superficially you might say well um, males have the upper hand um, no, the, not, you not. know so it's a patriarch because look they're bossing everybody around hang on Greg. So, but when you look at it closely, you can say the woman can inflict punishment on the men too. So they have a oh. power relationship. You just can't see it because you, you're projecting yourself into it too much. So, for example, um, women have – civilization is women. Women have caused civilization. Women, women are causing our destruction. Now, Sophie's going to – head's going to explode when I say that. Oh, but no, hold on. Where, no, the agree. evidence for it is – when you look at the power relationship between females, hang, yeah, hang on, Greg, can, do you mind muting? Because it, it switches in and out. So, so if you look at, say, what happened at the beginning of civilization, is men can punish women quite easily uh, in the hunter-gatherer situation because we're nomadic, and and we need to move on. The women hate moving on. You can see it today. They oh. the uh, the women want to be sedentary. It's very demanding on. Greg, do you mind just uh, muting? Uh, so it's very dem uh, demanding on in a nomadic tribe is on the woman because in, they have babies, and, you know, packing up the thing and moving on. They have to move on because we are essentially hunters and we have to move with the herd. The, everything goes to pieces if we get sedentary. The women want to be sedentary. They're in opposition to, to the men. The men, the men can uh, punish the women by moving. They, the, it's up to the men to say, we're moving camp. Now, if, if they do that, it's severely, it's a it's a whip on the woman, right? It's a, now, the woman can retaliate I, I, I by mean, withholding sex. I don't, I don't agree with that at all. I don't see this thing in punishing and all that. There is two different roles. Uh, there's probably certain amount of life in the woman where she is sedentary and certain moments where she's nomadic. And in anthropology, she is not notoriously a gatherer um, as opposed to men who are more hunters. So... I, I don't think that there's a you sh I should take that position of punishing and conflict and as Greg says we don't want to get caught into this kind of reasoning of that one will dominate I, uh, as 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 you were saying earlier transcending this is more important and I explaining the fact that women would be at the base of civilization is not enough it's it's it has to be also mentioned that there is also the the the, the other the other uh, male uh, advantages too for with power and dominance and all these things. So it's it's not. I, I wouldn't say this. That one is punishing that one, and that one is trying to dominate. I live in a matriarchal society in Ireland. I I can see the powers of mothers on their sons, and I've seen it all at work in in lots of parts of the world that don't even realize. So but is. I'm not saying that women are not looking. It's a different type of power. But what I'm saying is that the power struggle should not be between us it is definitely not there that i want to bring the conversation but what i what i'd like to bring the conversation to is how we can understand better because our two brains don't work exactly yeah. the same way sophie you no know? yeah look th th this is it this is it. this is what i'm tr trying to work with with uh, take a path understand because you, you know you said earlier <clears throat> you were struggling with this uh Understanding this male egoic perspective, because you you know you you said that you didn't feel that the the females had that to the same extent, at least not originally, and and now what you're just saying, I, I think one of the most interesting things that Hugh pointed out, uh, I think it was uh, uh, about the the, uh, the 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 wrath the the anger of Carly, uh, and he sent me something to read. Um, Hugh, I don't know if you know the article I'm talking about. Was that you? Because that explained 
Um, I mean, I suppose this operates on a kind of a middle ground because it, it wasn't describing transcendence. It was just describing the male and female positions because they seem to be perpetually misunderstanding and mistaking each other all the time. And it seemed to be extremely good uh, uh, at describing that. Um, I've got to admit, I didn't, I, I had a lot of trouble understanding it. I still don't think I fully understood it. Uh, I'm just wondering, Hugh, do you, do you can possibly, um, if you know what I'm talking yeah, that's, about? That's, that's what, what I was going to say is you, you don't want to have this conversation. You absolutely do not want to have this conversation. Because you you are not hiding to nothing. This you see you see what Sophie's saying is we should understand each other and get all she's saying is I, I'm a I'm a female, I see it this way. All you'll get out of that is I'm a male, I see it that way. And you will do that till fucking hell freezes over. There's no insight into doing that. So you're not getting anywhere. You're just saying, I have a female identity, I have a male identity, why don't we dance? You you were you're not getting to transformation, you're not getting any insight. So, no, no, so I know. Why, I understand. So, but, but it was an advance on just. So, so, but, but you, so you mustn't do this thing. You mustn't do this thing of exploring. I'm a man, and oh, I need to understand you as a woman. No, no, that's what women think. But like, what? Why do we have to understand each other? It would be fatal if we all were happy families. It's like the whole our secret to our survival is. The fact that we're in opposition and we're in dynamic tension and stuff. And so the women are perpetually, we want to ease the tension. Why? So because you have a mammalian brain. That's part of our survival thing was easing the no, tension, I, giving I, sex I, I like a bonomo to ease the I'm tension. Intrigued. And so I'm and curious. So, I'm curious. I'm not trying to I exactly understand what you're saying. Yeah, I love but that, the I'm, I'm warning you against that curiosity. I'm warning you against, you must, against that curiosity. That's the curiosity right. that does not kill the cat. That, yeah, but you that's see the curiosity that does not kill the cat. Yeah, but sometimes I'm, I'm. So, so you're not I'm getting to insight. With well. all the things you post on, on a, on the sub and, uh, uh, okay. and some of the conversations um, about tech and war and stuff, because I feel, I mean, hmm. I, I feel um, as I, I just don't hmm. get you guys. So I'm just saying, like, uh, I'm on your side, by the way. I. It's not that I want to try to get, oh, we all, we're going to exchange, mm. we're going to explore our femininity and our masculinity. That, that, I'm not into that. that. It's not that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I sometimes don't get it, guys. That's all. And I'd like to know I, if other I, women I, are the same. And maybe we have other things to say, no, but, you know, okay. I don't get now, it. Address it. Okay. Now, can I, well, I don't have, okay, am I, okay. I don't understand either because I like looking at women. Like it's it's a technical thing, but when you go to a hairdress, all women do in in Australia, they just put men down. We are the second class citizens, and I would say that is wrong. <laughs> Look, in the bigger picture, the most important things we need to do right now, men and women need to dance together, without the. Um, the legal industry, because it's unnatural. It's just, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. Would you, it's just wrong. Um, so, oh yes, Greg, you're right. The it's problem is that we, mm. yeah, for, right. for our survival, yeah. for, for, see, this, this is a misdirection. This is horrible. I this makes my home. stomach churn. I can't bear oh, this. Wow. If I can. So, 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 That's listen. Good. The the problem is that. The, the, for us to survive, right? We're in terrible peril. Yes. Like, if indeed. there's any hope of us surviving, and I do hope there's some some hope of us surviving, is mm. is we have to get over identity. So yes. this reflection of identities and identity politics is absolutely fucking poison. It is burning up uh -huh. our time. This this is how we go <sighs> down the toilet. So, so oh. we say, oh, we have to get along, we have to understand and stuff, and it's like, no, you have to transcend. So, in a, so, so, okay. it's oh. so, so it's simple, Sophie. The reason why you don't get it is because I'm talking to the alien cortex, and women are not that dominated by the alien cortex. So, if you if you start talking about power and relationships of power and whether it's a matriarchy and that we've done, we've done, we've done. You see, you see what. 
See, the, this is this is the fatal combination: is the 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 the, the male has to transform, but the the, the oh, male has me. to transform this over dominant alien cortex. But what the the woman is delaying him. The woman is harassing him and, and saying, do this, do that, come from this angle. Come oh, on. It's, okay. it's like men are from country, Mars and yes. women are from Venus. And so, so it's, it's stopping his transformation. And so, so, so this is terribly dangerous territory because, the, because it's very high powered. Look, look, you see, you look, can see brother. Greg's being animated and stuff. And so it's, it's, it's like... What, it's, is, it's, what it's, is stopping the female transformation? And this, this is not the route to transformation. What, what is stopping... The female transformation, because as Greg said, oh, I love dancing with men. I think dance they, is a place where we What's stopping the female? Much, but I don't. I well, don't see. What, you what, say the, what's the male. Is, okay. Uh, hold transformation on. Is, is impeached what's, by. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. So what's stopping? What would be I, the, I think we should kind of end it here because I, I think we should kind of end it here because it's getting silly. But what what the what's stopping the female transformation is they don't have such a dominant alien cortex. All of uh, this is I, I the transmutation agree. of the alien cortex. And if you, <laughs> oh shit, and this is what this is. So, so this is why I don't I don't go in this territory mm. because this is kind of you can only understand this no. stuff once you've transcended um. it. So it, but, it's uh, useless uh, to talk about this on, on this side of the, the, the divine. See, um, yeah, see. but what, what is the? I think the path, the path that you're talking about of transcendence, and and even the whole meditation and a lot of a lot oh, of things that, that we talk about is 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 definitely different. But, um, and oh, and maybe maybe that would be interesting to address. I don't understand that it's yeah. a territory. Where it, where it's it's fraught with it's a minefield. I know we we get we can get caught in identities and it's it's not where we want to go. I I agree okay. that. that to be honest, I mean, since I've been listening to the conversations, I've got a lot out of this, and I really love them. And I would, you know, I I really think it's fantastic what we're doing together. But mm. I, oh, I, oh, I, I, I I sometimes just mm. I I, I Greg, just, turn your microphone off, please. You can okay. you can explain uh, very well certain certain things from from the male point of view, but I think there's not enough uh, women who are who are also uh, adding to this pattern, add, adding to this to this thing. That's that's uh, sorry if I'm not expressing myself very well like you do. Okay, okay um, but wait, what what do you want? To, okay, if you add women, what what do you hope to achieve? What I want to achieve is just where I, I, I just feel that I would like to hear more female voices and see what happens. I'm not, I don't have a, a, a goal or an outcome in mind. I would just like to hear it more because it's just, there's just more, when I see the icons, I see, well, sometimes A, me, R, but it, you know, there's, there's not the same, uh, there's not, there's, I don't know, there's not many voices, let's say. Not many voices, that's all. It's add to the choir kind of thing. Sometimes it's nice to have different notes, okay. different, now, you know, um, like in music. Uh, uh, please, so, I do agree with your comment um, because what we're all about to go through, we need, we need to work as, we need to work together. We can't let the legal industry destroy us. But I, as women are, <laughs> blokes and women are actually, we are actually, I have to say in this country, I have to say in this country, we have to be equal to women. This country, uh, the women are the dominant species. I don't agree with that. I do think men are, we do have something to say, but in Australia, the women are the dominant species. I don't think that's. I think that's wrong, and I do think Jermaine Greer. Um, I do like your comment, but Jermaine Greer. Uh, now, in this country, it has to be balanced out. Divide and conquer the corporations uh, with people. But I do agree with your comment. 
um, because uh, see in this country if, if a, a bloke says a comment the female can take you to court we are not allowed to question women it's illegal in Australia it's highly illegal so okay guys like let's 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 just okay let's just get grounded in a bit of sanity here mm. okay. it's like we're on the fucking Titanic right we are on the Titanic. Happy families and hearing more voices and singing in the choir is, I don't know, man. <laughs> I would like to survive the Titanic. I mean, I would like some people to survive. I'm trying to give you lessons in survival. I'm not trying to give you a lesson in happy families, compatibility, agreeableness, and all the stuff from your mammalian brain. So if, if you want to survive, it's enlightenment. That's the only thing. The only thing. Only thing is, uh, is, is, I think we've, we've blown it already, but uh, even if a few be people achieve it, sing choirs and happy families and understand each other, there's no, that, that is the way to go down. That is literally, you will dance round and round and off the cliff. So, the, so it, it's, you know, you, it's for, Women to transcend themselves, they need to transcend the, the mammalian brain. It's very, very difficult because they're completely grounded in the instinct. And right now, I bet you, Sophie, your, your mammalian brain is screaming at what I'm saying. But it's, it's a lot of people have said in the past, it's virtually impossible for, for women to transcend that. And it would probably be bad for the species if, if it was possible. So, did, did. so just uh, remember, though, we, we're on the Titanic, right? We're on the okay. Titanic. Uh, okay. uh, don't evolve. forget that we, we've got. Yeah. So we we're not. A, so we have to do rapid realization and evolution. Yes, man, man, the way to screw man. it up is for the women to say, "Wait, hang on, Greg." The way to screw it up is is for the women to get involved and say. No, we should be compassionate. We should be social no. justice. We need to get along and stuff. No, that's absolutely not correct. Mm -hmm. the, the woman's instincts will drag us down in the same way as Jim Jones. If you go and look at what the women are doing, we're doing that on this broad Hard. society. We will go oh, Jim oh, Jones oh, if the women oh, are allowed oh, to be women. Uh, it should be. I'm sorry, I just have to say it that way. All right. Now I will. But, but anyway, let's end it there. I don't want to. I don't want to hear any more about it because I don't want to hear this is bullshit gender point war taken. stuff and highly okay, emotive. It's basically, it's taken. ignorance. It's ignorant talk, and it's it's very low level, uninsightful. And we have to get to to an insight. So there, there is a goal in mind in, yes. in this. Case. Uh, okay. but and it's a so so let's let's should we just Greg? Do you mind just pausing here? Let's let's end it here and, and pause. That is correct. Because this this Bang. is going down the tubes. Yeah, you go around in circles. Mm. Okay, so yeah, so let's let's like end this. So this so let's end this neurosis. We've got into a place of neurosis, and so the the place of neurosis is going round and round, chasing the tail, going our way. It's it's the By same the way. thing as gender wars and impossible bullshit politics, identity politics. This is saying ego against ego. And while the egos fight, they're not being transcended. You, you, this is the, we, this, you're sapping the energy that we need to achieve escape velocity. See so what, the, what the, 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 the current politics of the day is draining the energy, the psychic energy we need to achieve escape velocity. And that's why we yes. go extinct. Okay. Point so anyway, point. Just, uh, let's try and recover some of that. Let, let's try break out of it with, with an effort of will. I ask you to just come to your senses. I would. I just pause. Hold it, Hugh. Or uh, hang, hang on, Greg. We we just Greg, Greg. We we're wrapping up. So, okay. So let's just pause. And take it down a few notches. Just is that. Energy that you feel rising with identity politics, gender wars, all the stuff that you get from the mainstream media and stuff is uh, is corrosive. It's absolutely poisonous because it's uh, it's sucking the the supper. It's taking the the fine energy out of the air. 
Um, and it, it, is the, it is the way that Thomas kills us. It's the gravity. It's the, that kind of negative force. And so uh, what's happening is, the, is this balance between rajas and tamas. So the rajas is all energy. It's how everybody gets spun up when you start talking identity politics and social justice and male and female and gender wars and patriarchy and maybe that's rajas. It's useless activity that uh, drags you down into tamas. And tamas is like the weight of the grave. It's gravity. It's a negative force. And uh, the only way to actually uh, achieve self-transformation is through sattva. And sattva is the stillness. It's the, the silence. And it's not an abstract concept. It's, it's absolutely visceral. It's there. And we can get in contact with it very quickly by just falling still, doing exercise, and listen to the further sound, the silence beyond it. That great peace. That peace is the solve of transformation. It's alchemical transformation. It is not agreement. It is not compatibility. It is not harmony. It's the opposite. It's the the sacred marriage and it is it is gained by uh, transformation and, and transcendence so in other words it's by boiling the pot that you fry the noodle it's not by letting the pot simmer down or get hot or cold so let's transcend hot and cold and move towards light and support. That stillness, just pause and rest in that stillness. Boom. Panamata Nirvana. Well, yeah, sorry, it was a strange end to it, but I hope uh, if you just reflect on what I'm saying, you'll start to, to see it. But we're on the Titanic. We don't really have time to play Happy Family. Yeah, yeah, got it. Anyway, is, we, we we're, have to we're not going to stop recording. Okay. Yeah. All right. Bye. Thank you, everybody.